told y'all I was sick. I made a mistake, but y'all gonna learn something today, though. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just getting some things together, man. We're gonna get it right. Yeah, the intro gotta play all the way through again, too. Gotta play all the way. Gotta play all the way. Gotta play all the way through again. Need you to hit them like buttons again. And we're gonna get into it. Lights back up. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I am back. I apologize, I made a mistake. Made a mistake, hit the wrong button. So let's come on back, come on back. I had to restart the live, I had to set it up again. So excuse me, I apologize. If you if you know me too and you watching, just put it in the chat next time. You know my phone ringing, my text messages going off. I got all Mac products. So if you know me and you watching, you know me personally and you're watching when you text and call i got stuff flying across my screen my phone everything is max so now the phone ring and the computer ring and just put it in the chat if it's not personal just put it in the chat that you can't hear me like everybody else did and and then i'll know something is going on and then i can troubleshoot the issue and correct it all right so I'm going to jump straight into it because I don't want to waste anyone else's time. I, I thank everybody for coming on back. I, I'm going to have to repeat some of this stuff um, for replay purposes because there are some people that probably, well, I, I got a lot of people that watch the replay because they run Amazon or whatever overnight. So they're asleep right now and they listen to my lives overnight. I get a high uh, spike in the replay like overnight. So by the time this ends and by the time I wake up in the morning, Usually the views are doubled or tripled and, you know, because a lot of the people are watching at night. So this live is going to be about paying yourself. This is an issue that I see a lot of people have. Um, like I said before, I was watching another creator's live the other day and there was a gentleman on there and he just was all over the place. Didn't know what he what didn't know how much he pays himself, didn't know what his cost per mile, just didn't know nothing. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there. Oh, and I got a cold too, so bear with me, y'all. Bear with me. I do got a cold. So there's a lot of people out there that have box trucks that don't know how to pay themselves, that don't, that, you know, they they have box trucks, but they don't carry themselves and they don't take the time and the due diligence to make themselves an efficient business person. You want to be a business person first. Don't consider yourself a box trucker. Now, there are some people out there that are box truckers. Like I said in that live stream I did a few weeks ago. You don't want to be a box truck. You want to be a business owner, all right? So you have to know things when it pertains to your business. The person asks you a question. Yo, what's your cost per mile? You should be able to answer it like that. It shouldn't be like, um, let me, uh, well, how much you pay yourself? Boom. Answer like that. 
All right. Even if you ask me how much I pay myself, I'm going to tell you none of your business. But the answer is going to be like that. All right. It's going to be like that. It's not going to be no. Oh, let me think, because this means you don't know. That means you're taking loads off the low board. And you're looking at numbers. Right. Oh, this pays two thousand from here to there. OK, I will do that. And then you're going and you're picking it up because you're looking at this number. But it does. You don't understand or you don't know what it's going to cost you to run that truck. Right. The cost that is going to uh, cost you to make that two thousand. It might cost you three thousand to make that two thousand, which means you should have never booked that load. Same thing with final mile. You got to understand what it's going to cost you to operate a final mile truck. All right. So there's a lot of people out there that don't understand these things. So before I give you the formula on how to pay yourself, we got to go back to the basics. We got to go back to CPM. Thank you guys, everybody, for coming back. I appreciate it. A little technical difficulties, but we back. We back in the building. All right. So let me let me pull that up. I'll make sure I hit the right buttons this time. That. All right. We're going to pull up this. And then I'm going to press this button here. Sorry for the technical difficulties earlier. All right, back like you never left. I appreciate that. The correct way to pay yourself as a box truck, cargo van owner, operator. So before I give you the formula on how to pay yourself, this is something I've never seen nobody talk about. All right, and this is something I've never seen nobody talk about. Listen, don't, listen, if the shoe fit, if the shoe don't fit, you know, if the shoe fits, wear it. Don't take anything that I'm saying personal, all right? Just make yourself, take the information and make yourself a better business owner operator. I may crack some jokes for humor, you know what I'm saying? But I don't mean no harm by it, you know what I'm saying? I want you to really be efficient when you're running your box truck and running your car with, man. It's just, you know, it saddens me that so many people after all this content that has gone out, you know what I mean, a lot of people still don't know they cost per mile. And if you don't know your cost per mile, you damn sure don't know how to pay yourself. So let's go back to the basics. I'm going to break this formula down for cost per mile. I'm sorry, you know, I I, 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 I messed up earlier, but we're going to get back into it. So I'm going to go through this again. Fixed costs. Fixed costs are things that, 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 that stay the same week to week. They don't fluctuate. All right. They don't fluctuate. These are costs that are running weekly. The same. They stay the same. So your truck note. Your insurance, your ELD subscription, these are costs that don't change from week to week. Your variable costs are costs that fluctuate, all right, from week to week. Now, my formula is different, is um is itemized, all right, from fixed costs, variable costs. I don't do it all expenses and then do the equation. No, especially for novice. Separate it. Separate your fix from your variable costs, itemize your fixed costs. Itemize your very cost. Let me show you this formula. And the reason why I want you guys to do it this way, especially the novice, so you actually see what's coming out, right? So when you get to a situation where you may have an issue where you're not be, you're not profitable, you can go back and look at your itemized fixed costs and your itemized variable costs, and it kind of help you narrow down and pinpoint where you can cut costs. All right. So let's start with fixed costs. Let's say this guy's running. This is a weekly example, $1,500 a week. All right. Uh, for his truck rental, we're running on a truck rental example. Insurance, uh, cost is about 300 a week, which is about 1200, $1,200 a month. So it's 300 a week. ELD is $10 a week. It's about $40 subscription a month. Cell phone, internet, parking, low board, $90 a week. All right. And then uh, his total fixed cost is going to equal out to nineteen hundred dollars a week. Now, on the flip coin variable cost, remember variable costs fluctuate. Fuel it fluctuate. Let's say it costs him fifteen hundred dollars a week, or her fifteen hundred dollars a week. Food about two fifty a week. Freight related costs, claims, dispatching services, etc. For the week five hundred. Truck maintenance three hundred. I'm going to remove.
at at uh, 50 all right so miles driven we're gonna say this owner operator drove 3,000 miles this guy's working he's humping he drove 3,000 miles all right so now follow me now follow me follow me follow me follow me follow me let me move my Can y'all hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yo, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Man, what's going on with the PDF player? What about now? What about now? Hold on, let me see something. Man, people texting me, man. Put it in the chat, man. I don't want to hear all that negative stuff, you know. All right, so when you remove, when you remove yourself, it mutes. All right, let me see something there. That's what I need to know. So let's go back here. Let me see if I got to unmute it. Let me see. Let me see something. Ah, all right, back. Can y'all hear me now? See, that's what I needed to know. Y'all can hear me now? Check, check, check. What about now with the... All right, cool. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's what I need to know. I got somebody steady texting me. One of my homies, he's steady texting me, calling me all names and stuff. Man, I don't want to hear all that. Put it in the chat. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, so y'all didn't hear nothing I said right here. All right, so I got to go back and start it all over again. Y'all didn't hear me no way. So here we go. All right, so I'm going to put myself up here. The correct way to pay yourself as a buy. I told y'all I was sick, man, so forgive me. You know, I'm here. I'm here, but I'm sick. I ain't feeling too good, but I'm here. So bear with me. All right, the correct way to pay yourself as a box truck owner operator. All right, now, cost per mile. Check, check, check. I see it. I see it's mutant. I don't know why it's mutant. Every time I hit, I switch here, it mutes. But you can hear me now. I see the bars. I just got to pay attention to the levels, the sound levels. All right, cost per mile. Fixed cost versus variable cost. Did y'all hear the fixed cost versus variable cost? Or did y'all didn't hear nothing on the on this PDF? Did y'all see hear anything that I presented on this slideshow? Hey, Pippi, did you hear anything that I presented on the slideshow? Because I don't want to repeat stuff over if, if you heard certain parts. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all can hear me now, but I'm trying to figure out, did y'all hear any part of the slideshow or not? Nah? If not, nah, I'll start from the beginning. All right, no, sir. All right, so let me start with the cost per mile. All right, cost per mile. Po I apologize for uh, whatever the the issue is i don't know usually i don't have any issues with this but it is what it is so we're gonna have to get no some people saying no you were near the end of the slide after cell phone right so basically stop texting and calling me because you messing things up if you're gonna say something you know who you are put it in the chat why are you steady blowing my phone up just put it in the chat it ain't like you're telling me nothing personal just say man. But when you text and stuff, it's messing the stream up. I'm not streaming on uh uh whatever that I'm streaming from my server, from my own server. All right. So bro, stop texting me, man. Put it in the chat. All right. All right. So where where did I leave off that y'all didn't hear? Because I don't want to repeat what I said. Or do y'all want me to start this 
whole cost per mile thing from the beginning. Because this live is a, is a watch now because it's messing up. But let me know. I don't want to repeat and waste y'all time. In fact, I'm finna cut my phone off too. Check, check, check. Hey Pippi, where did I leave off at? What did y'all what didn't you hear? Alright, take it from the top. Alright, back to the top. Back to the top. Correct way to pay yourself, alright? Don't repeat. <laughs> man, I need to know where. I'm going to take it from the top, man. Whoever don't want to stick around, man, it is what it is. It's a dub anyway, man. You know what I'm saying? It, technical difficulties tonight. It is what it is. It happens. It don't happen often. It happens tonight. So it is what it is. The correct way to pay yourself. Let's go. Cost per mile, an issue that a lot of people are having, all right? Still don't know how to pay themselves, all right? But before I can show you how to pay yourself, you got to know your cost per mile, all right? So from the top, again, the way I do it is I differentiate fixed costs from variable costs, all right? Differentiate. I think if you are new, you're a novice, you need to differentiate your fixed costs from your variable costs, and you need to itemize them separately so that if you do have any issues later on down the line where you need to go and dig into your books to see where you can cut costs, when you itemize these things uh, individually, it makes it easier for you. And, you know, it really as a business person, you should differentiate the cost anyway. So your fixed costs are things that do not change over time. You get a truck note, it's going to be the same thing every month. Your insurance is going to be the same thing every month for that year. And then obviously the following year, if you don't have any occurrences, they're going to give you a little discount. But for that year, it's going to be the same month to month. Things that don't change month to month All right, is your fixed costs. Your variable costs are things that fluctuate month to month. Week, excuse me, week to week. All right, Your fuel is going to fluctuate. Your miscellaneous costs are going to fluctuate. So we're going to go on an example of this man or woman that's operating a box truck that's a rental um, to come up with their cost per mile with my formula, all right? Truck payment, $1,500 a week to rent the truck. Insurance, $300 a week, which equals out to $1,200 a month. ELD, $10 a week, which equals out to $40 a month. Cell phone, internet, parking, low board. Basically miscellaneous fixed costs, $90 a month. Total fixed costs for the week, $1,900. All right, fuel, 1500 for this week. This is at the current fuel cost at $4.67. All right, for diesel, a gallon. All right, food, 250 Freight-related charges, claims, dispatching, 500 So person has a dispatcher, they're paying them 10%, blah, blah, blah. These, these costs fluctuate depending on what the person grosses week to week. All right, uh, truck maintenance, repairs, tires, et cetera, 300 for that week. Any other miscellaneous expenses, tolls, lodging, fines, washes, 200 for that week, giving this individual a variable cost for that week at $27.50. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, uh, do our equation for fixed cost and variable cost. So all these things are going to stay the same. This person operated at 3,000 miles, right, for that week. He really was driving. So he ran 3,000 miles, right? All right, follow me now. So now, all right, so I see it. So now that person was driving. So now what you're going to do is you're going to divide that total fixed cost at $1,900 uh, divided by 3,000 miles. That's going to give you a fixed cost of $0.63 cent per mile. All right, and then what you're going to do is you're going to divide that total variable cost, right, at twenty-seven fifty, right, divided by three thousand miles. That's going to give you a variable cost per mile of ninety-one cents. All right, all right. So from there, from there, what you're going to do is you're going to take that fixed cost per mile at sixty-three cent. You're going to take that variable cost amount at ninety-one cent, and you're going to add them together, which is going to give you a total cost. Per mile of a dollar fifty-four. All right, that's how you come up with your cost per mile. There's other short 
ways to do it. But like I said, you should do it the long version where you need to itemize and differentiate uh, your uh, fixed costs and your variable costs because you're a business owner. You're not a box trucker. Don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts as a businessman. Know where your money is coming and know coming from and know where your money is going. Eventually, one day, everybody has to go back and look at their books. You want it itemized to a T. Don't shortcut nothing. Just don't put gross 5000 cost 4000 Nah, break it down. Break it down all the way down. All right. If you are not a person who can afford a CPA, all right, you, you're running your own box truck, you have a subscription to QuickBooks or something like that, you're paying that subscription. You can input this stuff in every occurrence. When you get gas, man, while the gas is pumping, before you pull off, go into the QuickBooks app that you utilize and you pay that subscription for, for your business, and it's going to say fuel. You're going to click fuel. You're going to put how much you spent, and you can take a picture of the receipt. You're paying a subscription for this service. They're gonna they're holding all this stuff for you in the cloud. So when it's time to do your taxes, only thing you gotta do is download or forward that CSV file to whoever your tax preparer is, and you do like that. And then the subscription fee that you're paying for QuickBooks is a write-off as well. That's your cash part falls under the accounting item itemization for taxes. It's a taxable event. Write it off. You know, this is 2023. There's technology out there to make, to simplify things for you. Utilize it. There is no reason a person don't know what they cost is. Itemize your cost, differentiate your fixed cost, all right, and your variable cost. Make sure you differentiate uh, the two. Now, let, let's talk about how to pay yourself. Now, this is an issue like, yo, a lot of people don't know how to pay themselves. All right. And this is sad. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Paying yourself. All right. All right. So here's an example that I drew up. It's an example that I drew up. All right. And I'm going to break everything down to you. We're going to go through this slow. We're going to go through this slow because it's. I got a video coming out in a few days about taxes too. But I ain't going to talk about that tonight. Let's go through this real quick. All right. Well, slow really. All right. This person grows $5,000, right? They're operating at 75%. So 75% is coming out, right? 75% for that week went to expenses, all right? So $5,000 grows, 75% went to expenses. That 75% totals out. Three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. All right, which leaves a balance of one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. This is where people mess up right there. So you run, you make five. I don't care what you're doing. You're running final mile. You're running middle mile. All right. Your gross is five. You pay your fuel, your tolls, your truck rental, whatever it is you pay. Twelve fifty is left, and right there is where the person pockets and think they made for the week. Whenever I ask somebody, they break it down. This is what they think they made wrong. That's not what you made. That is not what you made. All right, you got a lot more to go in the equation. Now, out of that twelve fifty that's left, you still got to pay yourself, right? So you don't pay yourself first. You're the last person to get paid. You pay everything first. So everything was in that $3,750, $1,250 is left. Now, the rule of thumb, all right, the rule of thumb is to pay yourself a third or 33%, 33 and a third. I do 33 and a third. Third, 33 and a third, same thing. It's going to fluctuate by pennies. It's going to change a little bit if you cut it in a third versus 33 and a third. The dollar amount is going to change, stay the same, but the pennies are going to, the, the change is going to fluctuate. But technically, it's the same thing. So that's the rule of thumb to pay yourself a third of the balance. All right. So twelve fifty after all the expenses are left, thirty three and a third of that, right, is four sixteen twenty five. Now that's what you pay yourself. All right. Now I'm gonna tell you why that's what you pay yourself. So that four sixteen twenty five is what you pay yourself. 
Now you add that to your expenses. All right. All right. The reason why you have to wait, right? Because you got to pay yourself last. You got to pay everybody first. Then you see what's left, which is the 1250. You divide that. You take 33% from that, which is 416.25. Now you add that 416.25 back to your expenses. Now that's going to bring your expenses up to $4,166.25. It's going to leave your balance now of $833.75. So you're still not done. You're still not done. None of y'all pay Uncle Sam. I have not heard not one person say, man, I put this much aside for taxes. I got a video coming out in a few days, too, about it. Still got to pay your taxes. Now, you pay your taxes on that balance, all right? Everything else are taxable events, all right? Write-offs. You don't have to pay taxes on that 5000 You don't pay taxes on that $4166.25. You're going to pay taxes on what's left. This is your net profit before taxes, all right? All right, so now, rule of thumb for taxes, owner, operator, business person, right? Hit the like button, hit the like button, hit the like button, 25 to 30%. That's the rule of thumb. No, I don't do 25 to 33%, 30%. I do 33%. I do 33%. And here's why. Because Uncle Sam is going to take pretty much somewhere between 32 and 34%. All right, so do 33%, all right? If, if, if it comes out less, then you just have positive, more positive cash flow. It's not something you really worry about, all right? So you take that 33% out of that 833.75, that's going to be 275.13. You set that aside. That's for our uncle. That's for our rich uncle. You set that aside. You don't touch, you leave that somewhere over there. You don't touch that. Now that's going to leave you with 558.61 net. That's what the business made. Which gives you 11% profit margin on that week and cash flow positive. All right, now cash flow and net profit, two different things. Two different things. I may do a video differentiating the two, but that may be a little bit too advanced because a lot of people don't even know cost per mile still and don't know how to pay themselves. So once again, we're going to go through this one more time, one more time, 5,000 gross for the week. After all expenses are paid, your truck rental, your insurance for the week, your ELD, your fuel, your toes, whatever, your food, your showers, whatever you spend. If you get a hotel, whatever, $37.50. Leaves you $12.50 balance. Once again, this is what people think they made. It's not what you made. That is not what you made. All right? After you got to pay yourself. $12.50 is not what you pay yourself. Rule of thumb is a third or 33 and a third. I do 33 and a third. 33 and a third from 1250 is going to be 41625. That's what you made. That's what you made from $5,000. Remember, trucking is a low profit margin business. If you want to make more money, if you want to pay yourself more, then you got to make more money. You got to make more money. 41625 is what you pay yourself. And I'm going to tell you why. 4100 which brings your expenses up now to $4,166.25. Which leaves you with a balance of eight thirty three seventy five. It's not what the business made. You still owe Uncle Sam thirty three percent from that two seventy five thirteen, which leaves you a net profit of five fifty eight sixty one. Now, you can pay yourself more from that twelve fifty if you want, but the only thing that's gonna and you can pay yourself handsomely. Let me say that you can pay yourself handsomely, which would decrease your taxes, right? But it would also decrease your cash flow. All right. And if you're paying yourself, now let's keep it all the way funky here. We're going to keep it all the way funky because, listen, it's back to business now. It's back to business now. It's back. Back to business. If you're you if you're a real business owner and not a box trucker, then you're going to understand that the business needs cash flow to sustain. The business should be making more money than you. If you're making more money than the business, you're doing something wrong. What business do you know? Think of any Fortune 500 company, right? Even their top people, their CEOs that they pay million dollar salaries to. Do you think they pay even their top highest paid person? Do you think they pay that person more than what the business takes in? Of course not. Of course not. So if if you're paying yourself more than what the business bank account has, you're doing something wrong. Your business 
should be positive cash flow every week, right? If your cash flow positive more, all right, than what you personally paid yourself. All right. All right. So you can pay yourself handsomely and that'll decrease your taxes, right? For the business, but it's also going to decrease your cash flow. All right. So that's why the rule of thumb is a third. You pay yourself a third. It leaves a balance. From there, you set aside 33% for the IRS, Uncle Sam. That leaves your net balance if you're in the green for that week, which this person in this example is, right? Their net uh, profit is 558.61, which gives them an 11% margin for the week, which is exception. It's exceptionally well if you're running a box truck cargo van business because the national average of an owner operator in this industry is two and a half to six percent. All right, so if you're running at 11%, you're doing good, all right? And I know this number looks small, but you got to understand there's a lot of people that are operating cash flow negative. Let's talk about cash flow negative real quick, all right? There's companies out there, right? There's companies out there that, um, that you know, here, here, here's, let me break it down this way. Let me make it simple for you, all right? You can have a business that's profitable, right? But if there's no cash flow, eventually you're going to go out of business. There's businesses out there that are not profitable, that are operating at a loss, right? But they have positive cash flow and they can stay in business. Now, you're probably asking me, man, somebody hit the thumbs down. All right. And this is probably why you're not you, you're not succeeding. All right. This is why you're not succeeding. All right. So check it out. There's businesses out there that are. Are, are cash flow positive, but they're operating at a loss. And I'm going to explain to you why. If you think about like Uber, right? Uber, before they went, before they IPO, right? They operated at a loss for years and years and years. But why were they cash flow positive? Because they had VCs that were steady dumping money. They had like, I think at one point, like $20 billion in cash just sitting there operating at a loss. Operating at a loss, but you have VCs and angel investors and uh, uh, Anderson Horowitz and all these VC uh, venture capitalists uh, uh, companies that were dumping money into Uber because they believed in the in the product, they believed in the system, but they were operating at a loss. This is how a business can can operate at a loss, right? Year by year by year, but still be cash flow positive versus a small owner operator, right? who doesn't have access to VC funding, you'll never get VC funding because this is not a business that fund that VCs and venture capitalists and angel investors are going to fund. This is something you got to bootstrap. All right? You got to grassroot. All right? So you can't operate your business cash flow negative. You got to operate your business cash flow positive because if you continue to operate your business cash flow negative, you're going to go out of business. All right? It's a difference between net profit and cash flow. All right, because here's another way you can be here. Here's how you box truck owner, operator, cargo van owner, operator can be net profit positive, but be cash flow negative. You run your box truck on an account receivable basis. You're running on account receivable, which means you're going to run. All right. Final mile and accounts receivable. You're doing the work Monday. You don't get paid Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You run this week. They pay you next week. So even though you got net profit for the day, you don't see that money. There's no cash flow. If an event happens, all right, that you you need to, let's say a truck breaks down in something serious, you ran all this week, but you don't you didn't get the cash flow for that. So even though your net profit, your cash flow is low. So net profit and cash flow is two different things, all right? A lot of people don't understand they need cash flow in order for their business, their box truck business, their cargo van business to sustain. And the reason why a lot of box truck owner operators and cargo van owner operators went out of business, one, they didn't know their CPM, two, they didn't know how to pay themselves, and three, they didn't understand cash flow, all right? You didn't understand. They didn't understand cash flow. You need cash flow. All right. So you have to pay yourself or you have to pay the business slightly more, especially at the beginning. Now, when you get to a point where you're skilled and you grow and you're just banking money, you can pay yourself a lot more handsomely. Right. You can pay yourself a lot more handsomely and your business. You've you've accrued a nice amount of cash flow 
over time. But in the beginning stages, you need to make sure that, you know, saying you may not be able to pay yourself as handsomely. Now, if 416, for instance, um, is not enough, let's say, for example, and a lot of people average about five thousand dollars a week, final amount or middle amount. All right. And expenses are high. Right. And they're operating at a loss. I talk to a lot of people that are not even taking home 416. They're operating in the red. But this is this is the this example is not an example that I just made up for like like this is a real like a realistic example of gross right and expenses. This is not something fairy tale. This is a real an ex, a real example. All right, so you know you need to take heed to uh uh this and understand how to pay yourself. All right, how to pay yourself. Um, I'm going to open it up for Q&A, um, for Q&A. Hopefully everybody understands now how to ultimately pay this up. You can go back and rewind this video at a later time, you know, for that formula, but that's how you pay yourself. I got a video coming out about how to deduct your taxes. Well, you pretty much saw it here, but I'm going to drop a video on it too, as well. Um, probably Saturday and, uh, Hopefully now everybody understands how to pay themselves. Low profit margin business. You got to set money aside for your taxes and you have to deduct a certain amount. Rule of thumb, I say 33 and a third. And you have to make sure your business has some money for cash flow purposes. If the business doesn't have cash flow, I, I'm willing to bet everything. I'll put everything up that you're going to go out of business if you don't have cash flow. Because when things arise, you're not going to have the money to take care of those situations. All right. So Q&A. Q&A. Ramon uh, what's that? Hugger. Appreciate the information. Appreciate you for checking it out. All right. So let me know any questions. Any Q&A about cash flow. Appreciate the knowledge, bro. Shout out to the uh, person who put the thumbs down. One of my haters. I love my haters. Shout out to you, hater, whoever you are, whoever you are. Shout out to you. Is four fun amount work to have to hire two people? It depends on how you operate. It depends on your expenses, you know. Uh, what may work for you, some may not work for you, and what may work for you may not work for some. Uh it all depends. I would say you need to contact them, set up a meeting, see what account they're offering you, see how much they're offering to pay you. From there, you know, determine what your costs are. Do you own your truck? Do you rent your truck? If you rent your truck, you need to see how much they're going to rent you a truck for in your market. You know, truck rentals are expensive now. So if they're offering you, let's say, Home Depot or Lowe's and about a $5,000 a week contract, five, six, seven days a week, you know, you're grossing 5000 right, which is about average, and your truck room is going to be $1,500 a week, all right, you can pretty much just use this, this example that I got there and maybe tweak the fuel a little bit. You're going to spend less fuel because you're not going over the road, but ultimately you're going to, you know, still be making around the same amount of money. But you got to add another person, too. So you're going to have to tweak it. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you're running a five day contract, five thousand a week, depending now if you own your truck, it's different. You know what I'm saying? Your expenses may not be as high as a person who's renting the truck. Um, I've been able to operate accounts in the past that a lot of people would frown upon. But I was able to capitalize on them because my 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 operating costs have always been low. You know, I didn't go out and buy 50, 70, 80, 90 thousand dollar trucks, you know, renting trucks back then when I was renting were very, very affordable insurance, a lot cheaper, you know. Um, so, you know, you got to you got to do your due diligence before you accept it, do your homework, ask them questions and then, you know, see what your costs get you know, like a mock of what your costs are and then ultimately make that decision for yourself. It doesn't hurt also to try some of these contracts. If if you try something for a week or two and it's just not adding up, there's plenty of other people out there for final mile that you can go to. So if you got to do a trial and error for a couple of weeks just to see if it's worth it, then I wouldn't I wouldn't count that out. <clears throat> How you pay your drivers to use 
your equipment w2 or 1099 well ultimately if they're using your equipment and they're your employees then you probably want to do the right thing and pay them uh w2 now if you're leasing you got some type of lease agreement with them then you can pay 1099 it's ways to finesse certain things you got to talk to your cpa but you can only get away with certain things for so long you know what i'm saying so if a person is using your equipment if they're using your fuel everything you're fronting all the equipment to you know run that business which is ultimately your business and technically their employees and technically you got to pay them a w-2 all right so that's the the, the correct answer that i'm going to give you now you know if you do some type of lease agreement with them then you can talk you know 1099 but if there's like no lease agreements or thing, anything like that it's all your equipment you're funding all the costs to run that business and they're running for you and they have no say so on that business whatsoever uh, and no cost is coming out of their pocket and technically their employees you got a w5 and fill out a w4 form and you're going to give them a w2 at the end of the year so is it better to lease or rent well it depends on the lease agreement um if you get a lease agreement with a good mileage uh 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 rate then maybe a long-term lease would probably be better you're gonna probably get a better rate for a long-term lease than a rental um i think right now i think ultimately you probably want to come into the space owning a box truck you know normally i would promote you know renting first getting you know while you get your feet wet learning the business because it may not be for you so you don't want to go buy a truck find out this is not for you and then you know you can sell that truck but it's it's a little bit easier to just take the truck back to the rental company um but normally i would promote starting with a rental truck but i can't really promote that now because rentals are just the prices are really gouged and it's really hard for a person coming into the space now in any lane final mile middle mile with renting at these high rates for the truck and also for the mileage and try and and be profitable um, in either lane, final mile or middle mile, it's just really difficult uh, uh, right now. So I wouldn't promote renting a truck if you have resources where you can purchase a truck at a fair, reasonable uh, rate. Then I would ultimately uh, advise you uh, to go that route. Uh, you own your truck? Well, if you own your truck, then I would just go give it a try. You know, go give it a try and uh, see what it is. You know, um, some of these final mile companies pay more than others. Um, ultimately, you and some markets pay more than others. All right. So it all depends on your market. I don't know where you're at. You know what I'm saying? Depending on your market, depend what well, you said for it, for it, final mile. I would give it a try. What are they offering you? Have you applied yet? What are they offering you? Would you ever recommend starting any cargo or box truck business under sole proprietorship? No. What happens if if you hit somebody? God forbid. I'm gonna give you a bad scenario. You know, God forgive me. You hit somebody and you kill them. They gonna sue you. What's protecting you? You know, what happens if you at a truck stop and you get hijacked and they steal the cargo? All right, they're gonna put it on you. All right, you don't want to jeopardize yourself or your personal social security number, your credit. You want to indemnify yourself from all liability. All right, and the best way to indemnify yourself from all liability is to uh, structure your business uh, uh, via an LLC or via corporation. I would, you know, say S corp. Um, so you want to indemnify yourself. So I would never do any business as a sole proprietorship. None none whatsoever all right uh you know anything can happen at any time and this is america anybody can sue anyone for any reason they don't need a reason to sue you all right it just got to work itself out through the judicial system but you know you don't want to put yourself in a tricky situation where something does happen that you caused right and you have no structure of business protecting you 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 personally you don't want to jeopardize your personal assets you may own a home if god forbid you do something 
all right and they come after you 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 know they're gonna come after everything i know what that's like you know what i'm saying i know what that's like even when you have a business a structured business and you're separated they're still gonna try to come after you personally all right they'll try it doesn't mean they're gonna succeed right but if you don't have nothing protecting you then yeah ultimately you are solely responsible so no i would never run any business i don't care if it was a lemonade stand you know i don't care if it was the a business that you know you know liability is just very very minimal no i'm not doing it i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it at all at all lisa rent which one would you recommend i think i answered that one if, if it was between the two i would probably lease and then if they are w-2 you have to pay workers comp very expensive. It depends on workers' comp. Not necessarily all the time. It depends on the state, and it depends on the contract. All right. Um, here's the thing with workers' comp. Most states, most states, say, most states require that you have workers' comp, but they don't enforce it. All right. So even my state, re, they require that you have it, but they don't enforce it. Now, the reason why they don't enforce it is because if if they enforce it, more than half of small businesses are going to go out of business. Because workers' comp is very, 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 very expensive. Very expensive. All right. So it's required in most states, but most states don't enforce it. I know California enforces it. There's a couple other states I can count on one hand and still have fingers left over that enforce it. Most states require it, but they don't enforce it for the reason that I just said a few minutes ago, you know, if, if, if they enforce it, it's going to just cripple, you know, the small business industry because a lot of small business owners, once you add that workers comp into the fold, they're just going to fold too. They're not, they can't afford to pay it because workers comp is very, very expensive. Um, so now what you will have to pay, you're gonna have to pay unemployment insurance right? Uh, depending on what the percentage is for your state, you have to pay unemployment insurance every quarter. You're going to have to pay into Medicaid, Social Security, and all that stuff, all right? So, you know, but, you know, it is what it is. You, you got to pay these things. You're a business owner. It is what it is. Do not play around with classifications. If you treat them like an employee, they have to be labeled as such, right? So I don't, I, I, I don't, I never played around with it. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I didn't is one, I didn't want you. You got to look at it from this point too. You always gonna have like some smart person that's working for you to think they can outsmart you. And if if you do get in a situation with them, let's say you got to terminate them, or let's say they want to raise and they trying to lean on you and they smart. I've had I've had situations where I've had people. That have worked for me and they just been angry and jealous and they, you know, threaten certain things and things of that nature. People are trying to pull it. So you want to make sure that all your T's are crossed and all your I's are dotted. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a situation where someone is, you know, put them people on you. Because once them people get on you, I'm telling you, once them people get on you, somebody put them people on you, they're going to get to digging, digging and digging. And they may put you put them on you for one thing. But when they come and they start digging, if you got other things, they're going to find those things, too. So it's best to just operate by the book and just spend the, the money that you're going to spend on the unemployment insurance and the taxes. Because, man, that little money you spend in a lot of money, whatever it is, depending on your state, you know, it's not going to equal out to what will happen if somebody put them people on you. And you don't want them people in your business. All right. I added with an EIN. Did you say you added with an EIN? What are you talking about? Uh, let me go back. Let's see. You asked me about, what did you ask me about? Uh, did you ask me about the, um, oh, you deleted it, I think. You asked me about the sole proprietorship, right? You asked me about the sole proprietorship. Right here. No, yeah, that was you. Would you ever recommend starting any cargo box trip business under the sole proprietorship with an EIN? 
Yeah, with, 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 see, here's the thing with the EIN. An EIN is for your business. That's an SS4 form, all right? So if you're running as a sole proprietor, you're not going to use an EIN. An EIN is a, an employee identification number. That's what an EIN stands for, employee identification number, all right? So if, if you're going to run as a sole proprietor, then you're going to use your Social Security number. Even if you, you try to pull it and let's say it, it goes through at the end of the day, whenever you fill out for something, let's say a contract, there's no company, there's no LLC, there's no corporation there protecting you. All right. It's just your name, which means your name, Tina Stina Fulton, right? You're liable. For instance, I'm crossing the street, you're in your cargo van, you're not paying attention, you texting your boo bay in the phone, right? You texting boo bay in the phone. And you happen to take your foot off the accelerator. And in that split second, I decide to cross the street and you tap me. You don't really hit me hard. You tap me. I'm going to fall on the ground. You know what I'm saying? Tina Stina. Tina Stina. I'm going to fall on the ground. And I'm going to sue you because you hit me. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But let's say I was. I'm going to sue you. And once I... Take pictures of your license plate, all the bystanders that are there coming up to me saying, hey, you need a witness, you need a witness because they're going to want to get paid too. I'm going to keep it 1,000 with you. I know how this goes. Been been through it before. You're going to have all the bystanders going to come up and say, hey, you need a witness, you know. I'm going to say, yeah, I need a witness because that's going to make my claim better, right? We get all your information. That lawsuit going to go on you because there's no Tina Stina uh, 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 cargo expedite incorporate incorporated a corporation or LLC protecting your personal assets. So man, once the lawyer get to digging and see you don't really have that much bread, but man, Tina Stina got this house, man, put a lien on that house. Put a lien on that. I need that. I need that. My leg hurt, my arm hurt, my neck and my back. I need all of that. All right. So put a lien on that house. I need what else she got? No, you don't want to listen, pay the little 150. Pay the little 150 is short paper and and have an LLC or corporation protect your personal assets. All right. Because things do happen. There are people out there that are looking to sue. It's people out there that make a career out of suing people. You don't want to put your personal assets. You can put a lien on your name. I'll be like, man, put a lien on her, put a lien on her house, put a UCC lien on her name. See, it's a lot of things that I don't talk about on this channel because, you know, a lot of people ain't ready for this stuff yet. Put a UCC lien on her name. Now I got a, a lien on your name. So now you can't do nothing. All right. You can't do nothing. I need mine. So, no, get you an LLC or get you an incorporation. Don't. Don't. You know, that will 150. That ain't, that's short paper. That short paper that will protect you in the long run, that ain't no money to protect you from what could potentially happen, God forbid, if 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 something does happen later on down the line, you know. So nah, don't don't even no don't, don't even do that. Don't even do that. Don't even think about it. Stop thinking about it. Go on here. I don't know what state you in, but you know, your your structuring your business should cost you anywhere between one fifty to two fifty. It's worth it. It's worth it. Don't put nothing in your name. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. It's not worth your, you know, it's not worth it. All right. All right. Any other questions? Uh, any other questions regarding paying yourself? <laughs> That's incorrect. Currently on a business with a name separate from my assets in and personal name, sole proprietor can be a business. I didn't listen. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you can't run a business under your name. You can, but if something happens, listen, you can do whatever you want under your name. But if something happens as a sole proprietor, you are the sole proprietor. So ultimately, I'm coming after you. The EIN is not going to protect you if God forbid something happens. You are the sole proprietor, which means you are the business. You're personal. The EIN doesn't protect you. The structure of business protects you, not the EIN. 
you know, but you know, it's up to you. You can, you can do what you want to do. You asked the question. I answered you. I answered you, you know, uh, what I know, you know, so you get your EIN, you stay a sole proprietor. If God forbid something happens, the EIN is not a structure of business. You hit somebody, you drop a, a, a box on somebody's foot. They're not suing the EIN. They're suing the business or the sole proprietor. The EIN is just for tax purposes. I think you're getting mixed up what I'm trying to tell you what's going to protect your personal assets. So, but in a, you do what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? You asked the question, I answered it. You know, the EIN doesn't, it's not a structure of business. You don't sue an EIN. You sue a business or you sue a person. You have a structure of business, an LLC, a sole corporation, or a sole proprietorship. All right. And then the way you pay your taxes would be your social security number or your EIN. When you fill out for, um, let's say you sign up for Amazon Relay or you, you run a final mail and, 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 and you sign up with UST or one of these companies, right? They're going to say uh, company name, name or company name. So you're going to put your name or your company name if you have a structure of business. Uh, 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 social security number or EIN number. Your social security number and your EIN number, tax purposes, right? All right. Now, like I said, if if anything occurs, what represents you or what identifies you as a business is either you, the individual, the sole proprietor, if you don't have your business structured or the structure of business that you choose, whether it's LLC or a S Corp. You know what I'm saying? So I answered the question. I mean, you you free to do what you want, you know, you know. Any other questions? Yeah, you're right. Universal Con at the UCC. Yeah, UCC. You can put a UCC lien on somebody's name, their individual name. You know. That's what he's saying, right? That's why I'm saying he just gave you what it means. Universal Commercial Code. So you can put a UCC lien on somebody's name. People do it all the time. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> a corporation is actually the only structure that fully separates you. LLC is limited. Right. So basically an LLC is is an LLC ultimately. All right. Let's 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 break it down. An LLC is really a sole proprietorship it just has a shell around the sole proprietor to protect them from situations and examples like i gave a few minutes ago right that's it you know what i'm saying that's all an llc is it's pretty much a sole proprietorship but it pr it protects the individual right all right it protects them from and indemnifies them from any liability so why not just pay the little 150 and get the LLC to protect you? I know a lot of people wish and hope and they say like, oh, God's got me and all that stuff. I say that stuff, too. And I, and I got a praying mom. I'm going to pray all day, every day. Don't miss church. But guess what? I still had people sue me. I still had trucks get into accidents. I still had a guy bag a truck into a loaning dock and didn't look at the clearance. You know what I'm saying? And tore the whole uh, awning off the dock off. And they tried to sue me for fifty five thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you're not running the vehicle, if you're going to run a business and you're going to put other people in the business, I don't care who you put in that business. I don't care who you put in the truck. And I'm not speaking to you, Tina, directly. I'm just speaking on the topic. All right. You don't know what these people are going to do when they out there. I don't care if it's a family member, somebody you know, people do things. You don't know what a person is going through. I had a guy, wife. Tell him the morning he came to work that she wanted a divorce. This dude, discombobulated, 13 foot six truck, hit an 11 foot Vida, tore the whole roof off the truck. I got stories that I can tell you. You don't know what people are going to do. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what people. Now, what if he would have hit, tore that roof off, the roof peeled back, and it was a car right behind it, it peeled back and flew back on the person's car. You know what I'm saying? God forbid. No, I don't want myself to be a sole proprietor. No, I need that under the corporation. Let them sue the corporation. All right. I've been sued. They sued the corporation. They didn't add Mark to that lawsuit. 
They added my business. They added my driver. And they added the other person who was involved in that accident. They couldn't add Mark. Right? So, now, let's say if Mark owned the business and I didn't have uh, a corporation or an LLC protecting me, then my name would have been on a lawsuit. Because guess what? The truck would have been registered to my name. My trucks aren't registered to my name. They're registered to the corporation. All right? So, it would have been, it would have been me that would have been tagged to the lawsuit. Yes, I represent the company, right? I'm the principal uh, shareholder in my corporation, right? I'm the principal in the corporation. So when it came time to go to the desp deposition for that particular lawsuit, I'm the representative for the company. So I'm the one who sat in on the deposition and answered the questions. But, you know, no liability was placed on me personally as an individual because I have the corporation protecting protecting me and my personal assets indemnify me from any liability so how you feel about boat express far as a van owner not driver I've, I've heard of them i've never i've never done business with them so i can't really speak on any feelings about them um i know they're similar like panther so i don't I can't really give you a, any, uh, I can't really advise you on that because I've never, I've never dealt with him before. Jesus will take the wheel for me. Well, hope he does. When can, we can get a claim, it is always against our business. When we get a claim, it's all right. So, yeah, whenever you get a claim, that's another thing. For, let's not talk about the lawsuits and the things that can happen outside of, the scope of work. Let's talk about things that can happen under the scope of work, like claims. You know, you don't want those claims. They're going to hit the business. You don't want them to hit you personally. You know, if you run a final mile or you run a middle mile and something happens with a load or a particular item, you don't want the claim to go after you. You don't want that claim to be placed on you because even if you say, what well, the hell with this company, right? We're going to walk away, but guess what? You signed a contract, so now the creditors are just going to come after you for those claims. You know, they're going to come after you. So it's just, you know, I don't know. You know, to each his own, you know. I, you know, I'm just here to help, you know. People ask questions. I give them the best answer. I, I don't know. Thank you. I bought a Sprinter, but I don't want to drive it. Thank you again for answering the question. It's all good. It is all good in the hood, man. Thank you. I bought a Sprinter, but I don't want to drive it. Why don't you want to drive it? You want to put somebody in it? You want to put somebody in it to drive it? What kind of Sprinter did you get? Any more questions regarding how you pay yourself and all that? You say yes you want to put somebody in it to drive it. Any more questions? If not, then I'm going to get out of here. Sorry about the mess up from early. I didn't realize that y'all couldn't hear me the whole time. It was just on mute. I didn't even have to start the live over. I just needed to hit the unmute button. I didn't even think about it. Now, I'm good. I'm just going to take some, some NyQuil and go to bed. I mean, I can answer questions, though. Straight. I've been laying down most of the day. I'm here, you know. It is what it is. I have mobility issues. Are there no touch freight for box trucks? I have a 16-foot U-Haul truck. You have mobility issues. Are there no touch freight for box truck? There's no touch freight, but there's two things that you, two things that may be, first you got a 16 foot U-Haul truck. Now, is it a U-Haul truck, meaning U-Haul, the actual company? Because if it's a U-Haul truck, 
they build their own boxes. They have a special built boxes with a low uh, step bumper because those trucks are designed more for household moving than commercial work, right? That's why if you notice U-Haul bumpers are very low in the back so that a household goods person who's renting it that's moving themselves, they can just step up easier into the truck. So those trucks, one, aren't dock height. Um, two, 16-foot box trucks, there's work in the space for them, but not as much work as there used to be in like the 2010s. So you may have an issue finding work for that 26-foot box truck, especially if you have mobility issues because of a lot of work that you are going to find for a 16-foot box truck is going to be probably on the final mile sector, uh, dealing with a lot of um, um, not even appliances or furniture, but more like um, fitness equipment. And if you have mobility issues, then that's not going to work for you. There are some middle mile partial loads you can run, but if you're running with a U-Haul truck, mileage is going to kill you because U-Haul's mileage is a lot expense, more expensive than uh your commercial truck rental companies because it's household rental and these trucks are catered to people who are moving in short distances. So they're charging like $1.29, $1.19 a mile. And plus, like I said, U-Haul has a patent on the design. They build their own boxes and their boxes are built with a, a household uh, goods consumer doing a do it their self move. So that's why their bumpers are very low, which, you know, those trucks aren't dock height. I'm planning on trying o, the road OIT. Yeah, the mentorship program I have is free. I don't charge for mentorship. You know, I did it. I may not open it back up again because I, I gave away 15. And only six people showed up. So I'm not, you know, I'm going to finish out this particular one. I may not open it back up again. You know, a lot of people claim, was complaining about people charging all these rates and high money for mentorships and i did one free to give back and 50 percent of the people didn't show up so you know once i finish these last two weeks of this mentorship program you know i don't know i might not do another one for free if i do do one it's going to be for free i'm not charging nobody for no mentorship consultations if you have questions strategy yeah you can book that on the website but mentorship i'm not doing i don't need the bread you know what i'm saying and on top of that, um, the way people was digging in all these other people that was placing the blame on them because they spent that money and then they, it didn't work out for them. Man, I don't need nobody coming to me like that. You know what I'm saying? So me, I'm straight. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing it. If I do it, it's going to be for free because people are, you know, you'll spend your bread. People will spend their bread. I'm not speaking about you guys, but, you know, the masses spent their bread with the people. And then at the end of the year, Early part of this year, everybody was pointing the finger and placing the blame on all these content creators. But I, I can't, I don't, I've never bought a mentorship, a box truck mentorship from nobody because I've been in the industry all these years. So I don't know what these people bought. I've heard complaints. They didn't get value, things of that nature. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't think that everybody that bought a mentorship necessarily didn't get value. I think a lot of people probably didn't put forth effort either. You know, it's a two way street. And the reason why I was able to come to that conclusion is because a lot of people still don't even know how to pay themselves. They don't know cost per mile. They don't know none of this stuff. So if a person did provide value in a mentorship, how are you really going to like if you didn't put the effort in to take that information that this person designed to give you to go out and be successful and you didn't take that information and go out and implement it, then, man, you're not going to be successful. So I, I'm not going to waste my time. I can look at the scope of what everybody else did and say, you know, what, that's not something I want to get involved in. I'm cool because to build it out, go through the process, you put all that hard work in. And then if things don't work out for a person, they want to point the finger because they didn't do the they didn't do the, the leg work. I'm cool. I'm straight. So, no, I don't do mentorships. And if I ever open one back up again, it'll be free like the one I did in January. All right. So if I get enough people that I feel like are dedicated that really want to get involved in one and I get enough requests and I can vet people really well and 
you know, they say, you know, well, I'm really going to be there. I really want to learn and da, 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 da. Then I may consider it, but right now, no, I'm straight. Back injury, used truck, I own it, free and clear. Uh, if you got a 16-footer that's an old U-Haul truck, then, you know, if you got a back injury, man, you might want to just figure something out with that 16-footer and might want to hire two guys to operate it for you and you can just, you know, makes a small profit weekly. I think that'll probably be the best advice I can give you, especially if you got a back issue, because even if you get out there, it's going to be hard for you to find middle mile work, even on the partial side, because you say it's an old U-Haul truck. So it, it, it has that U-Haul patent design, which is not going to be dock high. And even if you put, if you put it on, um, the dock lifters, the dock ramp lifters is still not going to be high enough because if you look at a U-Haul truck, their box is low. Their bumper is low. It's still not going to be dock high. So the only thing you can really do in that truck is some final mile work, and, and you can't do it, so you're going to have to hire some guys to do that work. You own the truck free and clear, just try to run on at least a 10 to 15% profit margin, and you should be all right. I think sleep is the best medicine, and NyQuil gets me there. One dose will last me hours. Yeah, um, yeah, sleep works. Sleep works. NyQuil works, too. If you had to start all over again, would you drive a box truck in this era? If I started all over from now, I, it would be a decision between a cargo van in a 26 foot box truck, I guess, you know, I'm not a middle mile person, you know what I'm saying? I've always been a hard worker guy moving and find them out two of the hardest things to do with a box truck, you know, not taking nothing away from middle mile people, but, you know, moving and, and, and final mile are two of the hardest things to do in a box truck, but they also pay the most. Um, so it's hard to kind of answer that question because, you know, I know I know everything now. So it's kind of hard to like erase my memory and erase my mind and put myself in a place where I just don't know. You know, but I guess if if I were starting all over and I never did anything that I've done, I probably would. I might, you know, I don't know if I would be a, a, a seasoned business person. That's another thing. Would I be a seasoned, a good business person? If I was a good business person, I'd probably go cargo van route all right and the reason why i do that is because it opens it opens it opens me up to more opportunities and at a at a at a it opens me up to more opportunities majority of the day all right so whereas a box truck limits you to a time period right and it also limits you to the amount of work where a cargo van opens you up uh, to a vast more amount of opportunities at a longer span of the day because you can run you can run your your uh dedicated runs right and then you can also do a plethora of gig work uh with with a cargo van uh versus a, a box truck so i probably would go cargo van if i went box truck um you know i probably would do 26 foot and i probably go over the road if i was a young boy getting into the space now I'll probably do the over the road thing uh because I wouldn't have any uh uh um I wouldn't have anything really holding me back. So I would set up maybe like a five year plan, you know, or maybe not even a five year plan, maybe a two or three year plan where I go over the road, stack that bridge, still living at the crib, not having to pay any, you know, rent or mortgage or anything, really just paying my truck costs and my cell phone bill being over the road. I don't have to buy any Gucci or or, or, or Dior or anything like that because I'm over the road. So I'm stacking all that money, you know, and in and, and two or three years, take some of that money and maybe start investing it to things that are going to bring me money um, that are that don't require me to be there and also don't don't require uh, labor and employees and then uh, try to find a way to exit out of the trucking within five years. So year two, I would start investing. All right. By year five, I would be exiting out because I built up an asset portfolio to the point now where I got plenty of money coming in and I don't have to put myself over the road. I think 
you know, people coming in now, I think they need to set up a plan. I don't I don't think trucking is something that people should get into for a lifelong career thing anymore. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think that. I think now there's plenty of opportunities for you to invest in other things where you your money can make money for you. Uh, you know, and, and and enjoy life. Trucking is something that, you know, um, you know, it you know, you invest a lot of time into it. All right. You got to invest a lot of time into it. It's a it's an industry. It's a business that you got to invest a lot of time into. And I think, you know, if you want to have more of your time, then you need to work really hard initially. Set a plan. Right. Start taking some of that money that you're making. Invest that into other things and build up an asset portfolio and then create a transition plan where you can transition out of that. And you got money making money for you and you can spend your time doing the things that that you ultimately want to do. All that driving will kill a non-injured back. Yeah, so, yeah, even if he's driving, a, you know, yeah, that'll, that'll hurt his back too. Yeah, all good. Appreciate you. What up? Uh, QB in the building. What up? What up? What's up? What's up? You want to come on up? So, yeah. I'm going to drop the link if anybody want to come up. Let me drop this link real quick. Uh, where the link at? Where is the link? Where is the link? Where is the link? Oh, here you go. Let's see if it worked today. I know I dropped it the other day and we had some technical difficulties. I don't know. I just dropped the link. Just hit that button and um, come on up. Hit that link. Would paying self be what? Yeah, hit that link and then just follow the prompts and then it'll ring on my end and I'll bring you up. Cargo van versus box truck, pros and cons. There's plenty of different pros and cons, cargo van versus box truck. You know what I mean? Cargo van, cheaper cost of entry. Box truck, higher cost of entry. Cargo van, cheaper variable, cheaper fixed cost. Box truck, higher higher fixed cost. Variable cost, same thing. Um, box truck, 26-footer. There's a lot more earning potential um, per, on a per-job basis, all right? On a per-job basis versus uh, 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 uh Versus a cargo van, you're doing work, but you're doing you're making less money on a per job basis. Hold on, let me um do this. Yo, let me uh assign it. Yo, what up? You see me? You see me? What's going on? Oh, shoot, chilling, man. Oh, Mr. QB in the building. How you feeling, man? Oh, I'm good. I'm gonna introduce myself. Don't even know me. But know what I'm about. But um, basically, I'm just another box truck. Um, know what I'm about. But oh, another box truck. Um, I got YouTube. Um, creator, just doing my thing every day. But I just came in. I'm trying to change the narrative, really, of what's really going on out here. I'm not just telling people lies or trying to make you jump into the industry knowing like what's really going on right now so that's, that's what's up that's just yeah. something that i do yeah I, I i've watched your videos i've checked your videos out um yeah, your, your amazon and um some of your later videos you be you kind of you know tricking people out one day you quit and then i watched the video but you didn't quit so i i, I, I ain't ever gonna quit but i really do that because like for some reason with the algorithm bro it's like once you put that that's when everybody just oh my god oh another person quit let me just go into it so it seems like that's how i could really grab people's attention right yeah i mean yeah i mean yeah uh, I, I hear you i hear you but here's the thing: if 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 you put out good content, I ultimately believe if you put out good content, the people that 
need to find you, they're going to find you. You know, I don't, you know, I put out, you know, I make sure I tie the video what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? The people who need that information, the people who are going to come watch that that particular video, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, ultimately, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I think, I think what happened last year, the year before last, a lot of people, uh, they got sent off by a lot of people who aren't knowledgeable in the business. I know there's people in the space now that just entered the space. There's some people that are a little bit more tenured than other, but what people got to understand and what people got to realize when they're giving people this information is, you know, people are spending money to get into this space. They're spending their hard-earned money. You got some people that are withdrawing from their 401k. You got some people that are taking money out, their kids, uh, college fund, their 401k to invest to buy these trucks for their for their their kids and their loved ones and things of that nature, and they going and they watching these content creators and they're selling them a dream. Now, you know what me and you may defer is I feel like you know a lot of that falls on them too. You know what I'm saying from not doing their due diligence. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying you can't put the blame okay. on the scam artists all the way because the scam artists ain't going nowhere. They're gonna always be here. You see what I'm saying? So sometimes that individual has to take that hard lesson as a learning lesson, right? And you know, kind of brush it off their shoulder and 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 learn from that mistake and and move forward. It's enough people that put out content, right? That uh uh really know what they really know what they're talking about. All right, I I just feel like people. Hello, yo. Yo, I guess he, I guess he hung up. All right, well, there right, you go. Yo. Did I disconnect out? Yeah, you back. We can hear you, but we can't see you. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to post on Instagram. There's some people in here. Yeah, so, so, yeah, so, um. So that's that's just how I feel, you know. I feel like you know it's enough people now that really know what they're talking about, and people just got to find the right people that really uh, uh, bring value to the space. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. I I I see. I see. You know, you really be hard on 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 on, uh, <laughs> on a lot of the content creators. You know what I'm saying? But you know. I can't hear you. You on mute? You gotta take it off mute. You on mute? You on mute? You gotta unmute it. You on mute, bro? I'm gonna answer these questions though. Uh, when, when starting off, how long would you say the owner should drive to get capital before hiring drivers? Uh, let me. When he come back up, I'll bring him back up. Let me uh switch this over here. Give me a second, yo. All right. Uh, hold on. We should yeah. be good now, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh yeah, but like I'm saying now, as I'm, as I'm learning, I'm learning to look at everything as two sides of a coin. Cause like, I'll be telling people that want to come in here. Like I literally just got off the phone with somebody and I'm like, bro, honestly, if you don't got hustle, you're not going to last at all in this business. No matter what anybody tell you on social media, like I always try to tell people like social media is, is kind of fake in a sense. Everybody going to sell you, sell you something, but it's rather you to do your due diligence and really understand what's really going on out here. Like I could tell you what I'm making or whatever, because a lot of people, for some reason, a lot of people just love asking how much you make a week, how much you make a week. What I make a week is not what you're going to make a week, because we all live differently. You may, you may need to make five thousand a week. I make, I might only need to make two, because I got a whole bunch of other businesses going around. So mm. if I tell you a number, bro, that's just me. That's what I like to do. But like I said, if you don't got no hustle, no motivation, and you're not willing to sacrifice in the trucking industry, you ain't gonna make it. 
I'm gonna be honest. And I heard you just talking about the cargo van. Honestly, I feel like cargo van is a way better thing to do right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I've been telling people. I've been telling people that for about two, three months. A lot of people transitioned over to it. A lot of people that were thinking about getting into the box truck space, actually, once I started talking about it, they actually just went out and bought a cargo van because in actuality, you know, to get into the box truck space, it does cost a lot of money now. And a lot of people, I think, uh, their hopes and dreams of getting into the box truck business was they had these these high hopes, but really they couldn't afford to get into the space. The cargo van business was a, a much more attainable uh, 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 business for them to get in at that time. And then ultimately they can scale. Yeah, so like, yeah, the cargo van business is a lot better. There's just more opportunities right now for the cargo van business. There hasn't been any slowdown with the cargo van business as long as you know how to hustle. You know what I'm saying? That cargo van, you can do gig stuff. You can do dedicated work and you have a longer scope during the day to get money with that cargo van versus a box truck yeah and like i'm learning like the, the overhead on a cargo van bro the difference is is crazy and then on top of that like you it's like it's no i was a service basically with a cargo van so right. it's like bro you could really like if you really dedicated and you could do whatever you want and you got a lot of free time bro the money you could make with a cargo van would be just simply better off the fact that the overhead is so so much less. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, like I tell people that. I mean, box truck is not always for everybody. So like, if you really want to, like I say, get your feet wet, start a cargo van because that's part of the truck industry as well. So get your feet wet in the cargo van, bro. Let me let me ask you this: What's your? Because you have like a love hate relationship with Amazon. Yeah. What What's your issue with Amazon? My issue is I feel like they don't really compensate drivers as much as they should like for instance like right now i was just looking on the board a little while ago it's like right now the average and let me get i'm in atlanta so i ain't gonna speak on everywhere when i speak mm -hmm. on amazon i'm specifically talking about atlanta area it's oversaturated but the normal rate is right now is like probably a dollar seventy dollar eighty a mile that would be mm -hmm. decent for a box truck if you if you're going over the road because that's what you're getting but amazon it's like you're going deadhead back home. No matter what you're doing, you're doing um, Amazon locally, locally, you're going deadhead back home. So when you're going 200, 150 miles out, you're spending a lot of money. That fuel that you're spending, I mean, losing from going from your last job out of home, that adds up over time. And you don't realize how much money you're losing. Mm -hmm. so it's really, it's just really the deadhead. But right now, it's, the Christmas season is over. So I understand, like, the, the race is not where it's supposed to be regardless. So, so but. what's up with the, um, this, uh, the, you know, they buying box trucks. What you think, how you think that's going to turn out? You think they're going to phase out relay ultimately um, or, or what? Actually, I heard for somebody that they really transitioning from like the normal low board to like contracts. Mm -hmm. But I also, I'm also hearing like the box trucks for Amazon is like for like home delivery of like heavy appliances or whatnot off Amazon. So I'm not really sure. That's but Amazon Excel. That's Amazon Excel. So they got that, which is that the the final mile delivery of like your couches and your and your treadmills and stuff like that. Amazon Excel. But they also got that MMRO program where they're doing what Relay does overnight, but they got DSPs and AFPs running those routes. And they're buying those 26 foot box trucks and they got them, the top DSPs running those routes from uh, facility to facility or facility to post office. And people are telling me, like, ever since I dropped that video, they've been noticing that the more 26 foot trucks they're buying at those domiciles, that those DSPs are running those routes, the less and less loads are popping up on the load board. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised because the way Amazon set up, because I worked at Amazon Flex, you know, delivering the packages to people's houses before I got into the box truck. So they basically, their whole system is they'll buy the trucks and then they'll like give the trucks to like independent companies for them to run it. So, mm -hmm. so that's how it's broken down. So I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, Amazon could find to save money. I feel like they'll do it. So I wouldn't be surprised anyway. But I always tell people Amazon re Amazon really is just another tool just to make a little bit of solid money when you don't got really nothing going on for the week. Like I yeah. always tell people, do not come here and rely on Amazon really at all. Mm. That shouldn't yeah. be your bread and butter at all. I I I told people that too for a long time. <laughs> you know, but, I got but, a lot of flack for it, but you know. 
but, it is what but, it is. But, but it's crazy because like every time like I get on the phone with somebody or I'm talking, that's the first thing they say. How much I can make with Amazon read? I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, come on, bro, don't. <laughs> Amazon, like, honestly, you should just like me starting when I really got to switching over to low boards. I literally ran Amazon just little thirty to fifty mile routes at night just for some extra cash. That's what all it became. Because mm-hmm. I know it's like me personally, my business, and what I was trying to do, I only could be truly profitable off Amazon if I run this little short 30 mile lows for like 250 to 230. Like, other yeah. than that, far out, I, I couldn't do it. It made no sense. Yeah. Yeah. I think Amazon, a lot of people want to do Amazon because the marketing. And then, you know, a lot of, they got, you know, they're a big company. So people, you know, they, they know that. Then, you know, you got all these people that are doing free marketing for them, you know, basically promoting that, you know, they're making gazillion, gazillions, a zillion dollars with it. But, you know, in actuality, I know it's not true, you know, and I don't even run it, you know, not even because so many people that have done it come tell me, you know, it's not good and it's not worth it. When I just look at the whole, the system, the setup, just even the whole, you know, the one way and, all that like to really run that and really make money and i know that you gotta you gotta run that and you gotta do a lot of cutting corners and a lot of underhanded and going against the system and it's a lot of things that i know that people probably who are profiting that are doing they gotta do some things that is against policy to really make make that money you know and um dollars bro oh so so I already know, but what I saw you put out a video maybe like a week or two ago. You doing um, you're running with a a, a final mile company now, or a, like a curbside final mile company? No, it's not even final mile. It's just basically it's just a comp like they're just like a, basically the company is just a group of, of dispatches basically, but it's just their whole company. So if the shipper contacts them directly, and then they have subcontractors like with box trucks, sprinters, cars, whatever that they give the work to. Did you give out that company on your channel? Um, or you no, nah, I didn't give out company, but I was giving when people were DMing me. Like after I dropped that video, my DMs went crazy. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I asked them like, cause they based out of Atlanta, they don't like the lows come out of Atlanta to places. Right. So you technically you have to be in Atlanta. So if you wrote um, wrote me and you was in Atlanta. I just mm-hmm. gave it to you. I gave you the uh, lady contact information, and you just go from there. Right, right, right. You, okay. They have like, they have like a referral like a referral system but i'm like i don't even like i don't even want no money y'all y'all, y'all give y'all the information y'all go make y'all money like do y'all think mm-hmm. so, okay yeah. but that's working out better for you i know you were, you went through a little tough patch like a couple of weeks ago but that's working out better oh, for you so they got they got me loaded every day every day like friday i did what uh i think i did like four loads on friday this monday i did five but like I said, Tuesday and Wednesday I only have one load, so it's not every day ain't gonna be perfect. But right. they have me put it, and today I did two loads. Tomorrow I got another two, so they got me working. That's all I asked for is to be working. I don't like being like when I was working on the spot market. It's like like some days I wouldn't even find nothing, or if I find something, it's not worth my time or me running my truck to do it. So it's like, bro, I'm not I'm not gonna waste my time. So some days I wasn't even working at all. So just. I'm just happy to, you know, turn on my truck and do a load and make some money. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Glad you were able to transition and pivot, you know, um, into something. Uh, a lot of people, I know they were searching in the past couple months to transition and pivot. A lot of people weren't able to. So, yeah, glad you were able. But you own your truck, right? You own your truck outright, right? I own my truck. Right. So, your truck can sit if, if something ain't really adding up. You know what I'm saying? You really don't. Oh, you gotta pay his insurance. You down in Atlanta, so you probably you in the city of Atlanta. Or you out like in the in the country I'm, part. I'm I'm right outside the city, basically. So you can park your truck at the crib. You probably got land or I'm something, right? My, my truck is either parked out my shop or outside the house. So right, yeah. So I don't so really that. pay for parking, but I mean, I, I can always preach to people like right now, like if possible, like try to buy a truck, like, like try. If you, if you don't got the means to really buy a truck, man, just stay out your job and save up money. Like, just save up, save up, save up. Because owning a truck right now in this market is, like, one of the safest ways possible to really not go out of business. If you don't own your truck 
especially on um, finance and leasing and your truck break down and what these what these mechanics is charging right now like it's insane bro everything is just insane <clears throat> yeah the mechanics are charging high right now there's a shortage on diesel mechanics mm -hmm. parts are you know hard to source depending on what's needed at the particular time and you know as long as there's a scarcity of diesel mechanics these diesel shops are going to continue to raise the labor price yeah so unfortunately you know that's your generation though what are you at 23 24 yeah, that's your generation y'all don't want to work now you working like but lie. but i but, but, 100 percent 100 agree with you on we don't want to work like I think everybody right now want to live the fast Instagram life. So nobody, nobody really want to lurk. Nobody want to pick up a trade anymore. Like everybody want to be a business owner or, you know, make some fast cash. Like a hundred percent agree. Like me personally growing up, like uh, uh, I'll quit every job I have within four or five days. Mm -hmm. So, but that was just my mindset of like, I don't like working for nobody. Like this is the only time, like I treat myself like an employee, uh, an employee right now. So this is the only time in my life, like I've literally been happy to get up and go to work without a problem. I don't know if it's the freedom, or just knowing I don't want, I don't have to answer to nobody, or just knowing like one day I wake up and I don't feel like going to work, I don't gotta go to work. I don't know what it is, but like I'm just, I'm just the happiest I ever been in my life. I can provide for my kids, mm -hmm. make so my family straight. So I'm just happy all around. Well, yeah, you know. Working for yourself, not having the answer to anybody that, you know, and just being able to, you know, determine what your destiny is going to be, you know, depending on how hard you work or don't work to get to yourself to that point. You know, it's a it's a it's a good feeling as long as you're willing to, you know, go with the the ups and the downs of being a business owner, then then, yeah, it's, it's all good. But yeah, yeah like you're. Yeah. Your generation, um, Generation Z, you know, if mm -hmm. if if eventually they don't start going to work, then, you know, like diesel mechanics, plumbers, like I talk about it all the time on my lives, carpenters, like we need Generation Z to start filling some of these apprenticeships mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of these trades as these baby boomers are um, retiring because if they don't, it's just going to continue to drive rates up, labor rates and things of that nature. Your wait time is going to be longer when you put your car in the shop. If your furnace goes out, you know, it's going to be a longer wait before someone from four seasons can come fix it. So, you know, but you know, there's a lot of opportunity flip coin. There's a lot of opportunities for your generation, uh, as well. Technology has advanced to a point now where, you know, your generation, which is technologically savvy, can make mm -hmm. money without having to really do a, a lot of the things that previous generations had to do to make mm -hmm. money because technology wasn't that advanced. Y'all got applications. Y'all can just wake up, got 50 different apps, and you can instantly cut them on and make money. So uh, that that that's the that's the positive thing. But ultimately, you know, it's a bunch of people in that generation as well that's just sitting around thinking they're gonna be the next. Uh, we definitely, uh, we, we definitely lazy, bro. Hundred percent, we lazy. Yeah. Not gonna lie, it's, but we lazy because everything is literally handed to us. Like mm. social media, everything in life is just what this new technology. Just literally, they put everything in our hands, so we don't really have to work for nothing or learn anything because it's like everything is just unfolding. Mm. But then again, what you were saying, like. Sooner or later, something's going to have to give because nobody, nobody likes to look in the future about anything. They're not worried about about um, electricians or whatnot right now because nobody, like, nobody want to look into the future. But I, I really feel like once like we get down the line, you know, and things just changing, they're gonna realize that oh, so we need some people for a lot of things. What's your uh, what's your uh, what's your plan as far as? Your box. I know you said you're going to school to be a, get your CDL, right? Yeah, I start Monday. You start so, Monday, so so, so right you, now. Oh, what are you saying? So you putting the box truck thing down because you're gonna be in school what six hours a day? Yeah, but um, sep I think ten hours actually. You doing but what? Four weeks? Four, yeah, no, nah, it, it's four weeks, but like they're so backed up. So Monday I go to school for four days straight in class learning. And then I'm home for another three weeks because they sold back up. Then I go for three weeks back to back to back. So that's you, really so. You paying now because I know a lot of the a lot of the things you don't have to to tell. You know, I just 
question a lot of people have been inquiring about going to CDL school. I know the CDL schools now they have been increased. They increased the prices last year like tremendously. Are you paying for this out of pocket? Or did you get some type of grant? Um, the hundred percent got a grant, and that's why a lot of people don't really look into that. Everybody want to spend out of out of pocket, but you could. There's government grants to help you, bro. If you make don't make a significant amount of income, like like you can. You could um do your way around to get in the CDL, but um without the grant, I believe it was like thirty five hundred. Oh, that's cheap down there then. I know one sixty up here, somebody told me they went it was seventy two hundred. Oh no. Recently. Is you know, different markets they charge more money, you know. It's cost of living up here is, is high. Oh you know where what I'm are saying? You? Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah, cost of living up here is really high. So, you know, uh, yeah, so 7,200, and that's at 160 trucking. And that's a national chain. What, what you got, the WIA grant, or you got another grant? Yeah, that one right there. You got the WIA? IOA. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, look, y'all want to get to our CDL, bro, just go through it, go through that process. I ain't going to lie, it was a lot of paperwork to fill out, like literally a lot. But at the end of the day, it's free. So I advise y'all, you want to get to CDL and you're not necessarily – want to go to a company and have to work for them for a whole year, you know, to pay back their money, just try to go through that. And then still, even, even with, um, that program, it's like, I literally had to fill out application for like Snyder and JB hunt. Like they on it for new drivers automatically. Mm -hmm. So you can get a job with a company after that. If you go through that way, you don't just got to sign up and drive for a company. So I, yeah. They they recruit straight out the school. So you had to take a, a you they make you take a reading and like math assessment test, right? No, I didn't I, I heard they do that but me personally I have to I didn't have to do that. It was okay. just a basically assessment of of like my knowledge on things like do I am I strongly knowledgeable about this or at least knowledgeable? Like it was just that. It's nothing particular like math questions or whatnot. So what's your goal in the next five years? Obviously you're gonna leave box trucking alone. Um, next five years, I'll say once I really get my CDL, I'm gonna jump in because I got a semi too. We're gonna fix that. I'm gonna jump in there and I'm gonna put a driver in my box truck, and then I'm just gonna grind out for just in my semi in the box truck for a little while. But ultimately, um, I'm always gonna have a, a truck on the side to drive. I feel like that's just some income I always can just hop in and do. But ultimately, I really wanna just learn uh real estate and learn like crypto and stocks and whatnot. Like that's my like end goal. For sure, it's real estate mm -hmm. and learning different having an income. Because me, I ain't grow up around like my parents ain't into like they was nine to five workers for the most mm -hmm. part. So they don't have the knowledge I'm looking for, and I can't find nobody for the knowledge that I'm looking for either. So it's really me just learning a lot of things on my own. Mm. So, yeah, like, crypto and stocks. That's a good, you know, those are good two good things to build. You know, put in your asset portfolio, help build your asset portfolio as long as real estate i think now i think you know you just saying that because i talk about it all the time on my live streams but you just saying it lets me know uh where your head is at and i think right now is a good time to start investing into those things since it's a bear market right now costs are down and when the cycle mm -hmm. turns in another year or two you'll be fully invested and in good positions because you're buying in now i think i think i think sounds like you you got a plan you know be young 23 you got your head on straight, man. So I I I, I commend you. I don't like the clickbaiting you be doing, but but I mean, <laughs> just, I mean it's both like I gotta reach out to somebody. Like I just honestly, me doing that, like I, I chilled out a little bit now because like I just wanted to build a, a platform. But now I get to the point where it's like the video I'm dropping probably I think tomorrow or the day after is just like me speaking on on business in general, and I'm just talking. I just talk like, bro, honestly, like. We just gotta stop thinking about what people think about us and just do our thing, like. So if you like, if you watch my videos, cool. I appreciate it. If you don't, then you know it is what it is. I ain't you know, like I said. I don't really I don't do YouTube for the money. I don't like even with me talking to like supporters. They always want to get on the phone. I don't. I don't charge for that. None of that. If you want to DM me, DM me on Instagram. I chopped it up with so many people, bro. Yeah. Like all walks of life. Yeah. You know? Just, yeah, me, me too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I hear you, I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. You know what I'm saying? I think YouTube is a good platform if you if you really want to help people to get the the information out. And you know, I see you, I see you grinding. You know, doing your thing. So, 
Yeah, I yep, salute yep. you. Don't don't worry about what people say. You're gonna have haters. They're gonna yeah, come. Just, oh, yo, bro. The comment section sometimes, bro. Like, bro, I, yo, bro. One time, I'm not, I'm not trying to like because you know YouTube is iffy with the words and everything. But somebody called me a specific animal, bro. Like for you know the color of my skin and whatnot. I'm like, yo, bro. Honestly, and then I have my girl. My girl read that. She was about to go all for him in the comments. I'm like, just leave people like that alone. Like they don't have no. Purpose. Yeah, you get that, man. I didn't got that. You know, I didn't got all types of racist stuff. I don't I don't pay that no mind. That's why they got a delete and the block button, you know what I'm saying? But you know, trucking is a very I, yeah, this I don't want to say sensitive, but you got you know, you got a lot of people that have been in this for a very long time. Yeah. And then, you know, just you know, going back to all the things that happened over the past couple of years, you got a lot of people that are gonna really uh, that really know the industry, right? That watch. You got a lot of novice that come in that utilize this platform to find creators to get information from. You got a lot of guys that are in the industry. You got to understand, even though it's a box truck, you got a lot of truckers out there that are over the road that are watching right now that are in their in their in their in their truck. You know, on their on their, their you know their, their downtime and they're watching YouTube and they're gonna challenge you. You know what I'm saying? So you get you get those people. They're going to come in your live. I don't really get it, but I've seen them go in other people's live and challenge them. You know what I'm saying? Because they do know a lot, you know. So you're going to get that. You're going to get hate. But, you know, man, just do your thing and find, you know, you got you a niche. I see you mm -hmm. got you a niche and just focus on your niche. I think a lot of people on YouTube, they... You got some people that understand and know their niche and then some, some people are looking for their niche and ultimately, when you really find your niche, you just kind of focus on your niche and build your core following. Once you build your core following up, they're going to stick by you and they're going to ride with you. They're going to yeah, ride with you. I, yeah, I don't speak to a lot of people who say they want to do YouTube, uh, YouTube. I'm like, bro, I ain't even not far into YouTube myself. I'm still brand new. But I'm like, just find what you want to post about and just post about that or content around it. Don't try to hop from here to here to here to here because you see specific trends because it's not going to work out. Because you're gonna have people from all all over the place, so you, you want to just find a core, like you said, a core following. And then when you get it to a specific spot, I already know once you get to a specific spot, you can post whatever you want because people gonna watch you that truly support you. Yeah, once people support you, they're gonna watch you. But ultimately, this is a you know, uh, you know, more people are gonna watch box truck content for educational purposes. I think a lot of people just lack the knowledge. <laughs> In the industry, that's why they can't provide value that uh, that you know people are looking for, and I think they get to reach, and then that's why a lot of people get upset. That's why I, I, when I you know I don't, don't you know when I say you know the clickbait, you know I feel like you got good content. You know I was speaking to another creator about you because uh, we watch your content, and we we know that you started doing the the clickbait thing. I think you really don't need that. I think you have a strong you're building a strong following right mm -hmm. based off your content your knowledge i know in one video you said your father was a truck is a trucker right yeah so you grew up in trucking so yeah. i don't think you really need to do that i think i mean my clickbait i don't i don't go to the, the extreme extreme on clickbait but like if i talk about something in my video i might throw a little little clickbait about what I'm about to talk, talk about in the video. Well, I don't feel like I go too crazy into the clickbait. But like I said, I do be a little dragging it sometimes. So I, I chilled out now because this is getting to the point where it's like, I'm not going to, I'm like, starting, it's because starting off really on YouTube, you ain't going to get a lot of traction. So you're going to do something to get a little bit of traction. But now I'm to the point where it's like, all right, I, I got people that watch me for me. So I don't really got to do that no more. You get traction when you, when you're honest with people. And 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 you're consistent. If you're honest with people, even if initially your honesty may not be what they want to hear, because when I first came on in April, my honesty was not something that people wanted to hear. And then a lot of my forecasts, um, they looked at it from a negative point of view because people want to make money. But I was warning people on what was going to come. And then when it came is when my channel kind of went, you know, took off because everybody was saying the opposite of what I was saying. Yeah, bro, I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into that right now, bro, because 
like it, it's so sad bro that people dm me and said bro thank you for being honest because a lot of people were saying one thing and i feel like you're telling the truth it's sad that people really have to dm me and say that i feel like everybody should be honest but now i feel like people are really trickling down and looking in like maybe this business is not what everybody make it seem because like even like i do my research look at the views from like the pandemic area uh pandemic era of mm -hmm. bog trucking in general then look at the views now it is the views is crazy right now like it's it's so down before people used to pull 20 30 40 50 000 views now it's what 5k 7k yeah so my like, lives my lives were about 100 people 100 120 100 people i get maybe 50 60 sometimes 70 like tonight is what about 40 people in here right now so yeah views are down the sentiment is low you know a lot of people are upset a lot of people have exited a lot yeah, a of lot people of don't they don't have the money they had during the pandemic as well to really start a business so that comes into t comes into it too but i feel like a lot of people now they really <laughs> post their, their experience and what's going on with them personally it's not yeah. all about you know how much money someone made or that this is a great business investment because honestly i tell people like trucking <laughs> trucking isn't a passive income bro like honestly this is this is this, this trucking to take you out instantly bro not not no more not i, I agree with you not no more unless you're running at at scale mm -hmm. You're running at scale and you got a system where, you know, you don't have to be on the truck. You're going to have to be involved with the day to day. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But if you're running at scale, you probably can do it. But now the cost of entry is so high. Mm -hmm. and, as, and as a beginner, you're going to have that learning curve. If you don't know what you're doing, you're, you're not going to make money. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people um, had big eyes to the industry because people promised, you know, large sums of money but even with the presentation i gave earlier in this live stream you know five thousand dollar growth sounds big yeah, to everyone wow. in one week but they don't understand this is a low margin business you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so about 80 percent, you know 90 percent of that money may be cost you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so you know yeah. after you pay yourself and then you float the business you know you're making less than a thousand dollars a month i mean a week mm -hmm. you know at that at at, at, at at that rate and i think you know a lot of people didn't understand that mm -hmm. and they got into this industry um the wrong way you know their expenses are very very high mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't know how to manage their books they don't know how to pay themselves and i think all this was due uh to the pandemic but i you know I, I stopped talking about it because it was like beating a dead horse and mm -hmm. you know some of this stuff that i talk about i have to repeat it over mm -hmm. and over and over and over and over again but man you know it is what it is but i see a new ushering in now i do see things picking back up yeah um, I, I have seen the trends picking up but i think that's because tax season a lot of people expect the money tax season yeah so. well, we tell you started with the youtube in april right you said April or what? Twenty twenty two. Yeah, I started. I started April twenty twenty two. Yeah, I feel like I feel like like we, I feel like we missed the train of like the content for Box Up, but I feel like we in a way better position than if we would have started when all the hype was around it. Yeah, if, I said that saying. before. Yeah, I said that before. Like, I, I'd rather have this genuine because I feel like everyone now looking in is like they more genuine than everybody else previous previously like. Whoever want to get in now, it's like you probably have the capital, or you probably like kind of have the means of getting into it now. So you more it's more engaged people than it was before. People just looking in, and be like, oh, he made this much money. I got a little pocket change. Let me invest in this. So I feel like I rather. Like, I'm so happy I started where I started. Yeah, I, I think I said it before too. Like, um, if I would have got on 2021, yeah, I think somebody probably would have put a, a bounty on my head because I would have been saying the complete opposite of what everyone else was saying. And I probably wouldn't have lasted to the point where I got to say, ha, 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 told you so. You know, I probably would have got booted up off this thing. You know, it wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to stick around until October and November of this year. But yeah, I, I, I hundred percent agree with you. And I think, you know, unfortunately a lot of the people that are entering into the space now, they're going to be able to use a lot of, the unfortunate, you know, situations that a lot of people occurred that entered into the space, 
during the pandemic and use that as a learning lesson. And then that's going to fuel them to go the extra uh, nine yards to do the extra due diligence to make sure that they enter into the space correctly because they don't they're not going to want that to happen. And it's what and another good thing is they're going to they're going to take the time to um, fully uh, get to know and do due diligence on the creator, the influencer content creator that they're going to invest their time into consuming content from because they don't want to make that mistake anyway. They want to make sure that it's a genuine person that does have knowledge um, in the industry and is not trying to, you know, sell them on something uh, and, and get money from them and they don't have a vast amount of knowledge you know, on, on, on the industry. So yeah, I, I, I agree that, that that was a gift and a curse, but I think the people that are entering now, they can really utilize all of that to their advantage, you know? Definitely. Cause it's crazy. Cause I was technically, I was in the game. I think 2021, I believe I was in the game. I bought my first box truck and, and I'll post a video of, of me getting it. Um, it was a international bro with a mass force engine, bro. Oh man, bro, Damn. yo, bro. <laughs> Damn. So we bought it. We bought it because, like I said, my my pops, uh, he was mechanic. He works on everything. So we bought it knowing we could do whatever we want to it. So it had a little engine problem. Cool, whatever. We bought a whole in frame kit. We did the in frame everything. Basically, new engine, bro. Mm-hmm. But I mean, tell you, that truck never ran properly, bro. I don't even want to tell you how much money I lost just trying to run that, get that truck started and running, mm-hmm. like, bro. And that messed me up bad. So I, I shoot, I hung it up. Um, I still had the truck, but I literally just hung it up and went back to regular working. Mm-hmm. Then I just started to like give it one more try, fix it a little more. Still never ran. I just sold it and bought the truck I have now. And the truck I have now is older than that. And this truck I have now, bro, it's, it's insane how good it runs, bro. What's it like an O two freight liner you got? O one, O two, O three. It's a 2000? Yeah. It's got that square front. I knew it was an early 2000. Yeah. Like, no DF, no DPF, nothing. Straight. You hear that turbo whistle when I come past you, like, bro. And that, that that's, you know, because I, I did a video about a month ago telling people, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, if you do your due diligence. You know, it, it may not be for everyone, but if you are mechanically inclined or, you know, you know something about mechanics or, you know, you, you, you don't have the money. I think a lot of people... They want to enter in this space now with a newer truck, but they got to understand a newer truck now is going to bring a higher finance note and it's going to bring higher insurance because everything is inflated now. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with an older truck. Yeah, if y'all listen, there's nothing wrong with getting an older truck. But, but if you do go with an older truck, make sure you get a mechanic to look over that whole truck. From top to bottom, pay the money. It's okay if you really get out here. Bro, just pay the money. Just it's better to pay the money now than you just go out your way and buy a truck and be in problems. Just pay the money. Have somebody look over the truck. There's nothing wrong with it. I try yeah. to tell people that all the time. You don't, you don't need that 2022 20, Mack truck. Like no, it's fine to get a little older, some older to you build capital, and then if you got enough money, you, you do that. It's fine, bro. Yeah, I I think you know I think a lot of people. Um, Cause I had a lady on live, man, some months ago, man. She tried to argue me down. I just, I just gave up. She like, I'm getting a new truck, and you know, I think, you know, I don't think people, you know, it's a work truck. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I think a lot of people don't understand what it really costs to really profit in this mm-hmm. industry. And you know, I got a lot of people that do that do understand it, and I, I do these examples of expenses and things of that nature. But you know. I have to always remind myself that, you know, there's a bunch of new people watching that weren't subscribers last week. So I find myself having to reiterate some of the stuff over and over and over again. But I think, you know, people think this industry is an industry you can get in and just make a whole lot of money. And you know what? It once was. It once Mm -hmm. was. But, you know, just like every industry, you know, every industry, there's a time period where you know, it's like the wild, wild west. You know, mm-hmm. I entered during the wild, wild west and I drained that thing dry. It's not like that no more. Stock market, same way, crypto market. The crypto market, you're not going to see 
those hundred thousand times gains that you saw in 2017 and 2014 that you as, as these cycles continue to go years in there's just the you know the early adopters that get into things early right those are the ones that come out um better and then once an industry popularizes you know it gets popular it gets it gets watered down so i think mm -hmm. you know unfortunately with the pandemic you know the industry kind of got watered down it did get saturated a lot of bad characters came into the space it doesn't mean that you know it you can't make money you definitely can still make money it's not the wild wild west no more where you're going to make money on top of money you have to be more strategic now and you know entering you it's it's, it's harder to enter and 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 go through that learning curve at a minimal cost a learning curve now is going to cost you a lot of money so you got to have someone you know there kind of holding your hand and 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 guiding you um but man it, it, yeah it sucks man it, it really sucks it but man sucks. i i i, I okay. think what you're doing is good man i i see you man I, I i see what you're doing man i always told people if you get in right now and you make it i mean it's it's, it's getting a little better i'll say now because everybody who didn't generally want to be here ain't really here no more but if you made it these past couple months to now bro you're good yeah. Mom, you made yeah. it to this point. You, 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 yeah. right, bro. Yeah, the tide, the tide is eventually going to turn. I don't, it, you know, as like I tell people, you ain't going to see those rates you saw early part of 2022, 2021, latter part of 2020. You're never going to see them rates again. You know, you know, you're going to see fair rates. You just got to, you know, put the work in and you got to make sure you're taking care of your business. But yeah, like you said, a person has been able to withstand, you know, um, these last couple months and they're still hanging in there then yeah they're gonna be fine and when we hit that bottom and their rates slowly start to uh go back to a point of uh, of correction pre-pandemic levels i think you know the sentiment will change and like like we said the people that'll be entering the space now will be more it's, it's it's different when you enter in something and you're using your own money yeah right, versus money that was given to you you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying when you're using your money you know you're going to be a little bit more cautious of how you spend it so exactly. you know i i 100 agree with you on that exactly. I, I do i 100 agree with you on that exactly. yes i do just man i told people right now man you've been in just save bro just save 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 don't make this little money and go buy a designer and whatnot is to save your money it's okay to buy designer, but you, I mean, you got you got to get to that point though. You know what I'm saying you got to get to where <laughs> your business is straight, 100 percent straight before you go out buying that Dior. Because I found myself doing that at one point. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting money. You want me to spit, double and dabble? And I had one little situation where it set me back. I'm like, all right, I'm cool. Let me let me save now. I'm cool. Like, thirteen hundred dollars. Thirteen hundred dollars. Them thirteen hundred dollar B twenty twos ain't gonna get that truck fixed. You gonna wish you ain't spend our money when, if your truck break down. You know, so but yeah, yeah, but you know, it, you you can definitely you can definitely get to that point, but you know, you gotta know when when it's time to you know you you can you know treat yourself and you know oh, the yeah. first we work we, you in these trucks every day, bro. You, and you working, you treat yourself, bro. Don't just you know just. Being our truck all day, it's good to know. Take a little vacation, little two, three day vacation, and just spoil yourself. I didn't treat myself the first. I didn't take a vacation. I started in 2010. I didn't take my first vacation until 2015. I went Jeez. out of town for a wedding in 2012, but it wasn't a vacation. So from 2010 to 2015, I didn't take a vacation. The only reason I took that vacation is because my girl forced yep, me. You know what I'm Listen. And it's crazy because the only time I do do something for myself, it's because of her and what she want to do. So she's taking right. me out of my oven. But I'm a workaholic. Like if she don't, if she don't say let's do this or that, I'm I'm working. Right. And it's and like I had to learn like life work and life balance. Like you have to learn that because you lose a lot of things if you work way too hard. Like, Agreed. I, I understand that now. But at a younger age, I was just grind, 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 grind because I had my youth. 
I had my youth. A lot of things that, you know, people ask me all the time. I think somebody asked me earlier. No, they asked me earlier, how would I start if I had to start? How would I start now? But another question people ask me, you know, do I think I would be able to do now what I did then? No, on many different reasons. One is because it's just a different time period. And two, physically, I wouldn't be able to do it, you know. So I tell people, when you got your youth, like, you got your youth. So mm-hmm. you can, if you bust, if you work really, really hard, you're 23, if you work really, really hard for the next seven years, you can be set by 30. If you if you work really, really hard and you take that money that you got coming in and you invest it into other things that make you money and build up a, a good asset portfolio to the point where when you turn 30, you ain't got to do nothing. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I was 10 years behind. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm at that point... I'm at that point now, but I wish, you know, at 23, I had the mindset that I had when I was 30. You dig what I'm saying? So I would have been 10 years ahead. You dig? So, but you, you sound like you got your head on your shoulder now. And it's good. I know you said you wanted to talk about crypto and things you don't know about. You know, we talk about that stuff over here. Man, you can always reach out to me. I'm heavily invested in the crypto. I'm heavily invested in stock. My own property, so you know you could always come on this channel, and you know I'm, you know I, I got knowledge. I'm a little bit about twenty years older than you. No, I'll be forty three this month. It's crazy that you said that, that, like when you was younger. But it's like I'm the difference. I feel like, like even though I'm doing good for myself, I feel like I'm not in the position I need to be. And I like right now at this moment, I wish I had the knowledge I had right now when I was eighteen. Mm. Cause I wouldn't mm-hmm. be in a way different position right now. Like I'm 23 with two kids. I have no choice but to, to work, bro. Like mm-hmm. literally. So like, it's, it's, it's just crazy. You got to crawl before you walk. Some things still take time, you know, you know, with, with a lot of knowledge comes with, you know, our wisdom just comes with time, uh, mm-hmm. comes with, you know, just different life lessons things that you're gonna go through in life trial and error you know what i'm saying so a lot of things that you know you're gonna be wise about 10 years from now you know it's just gonna come with just living so i hear what you're saying but you don't want to you know you you i think where you're at right now you're in a better position than a lot of people that are 20 30 years your senior you know what i'm saying because you got your youth um you got your youth working with you and you have something that a lot of people wish they had. A lot of people don't own a mm-hmm. truck. A lot of people are mm-hmm. still renting a truck. You know, so a lot of people uh, uh, wish they could get a truck. You know what I'm saying? So, man, you are in a position. I think I think you're fine. You know what I'm saying? I think, you, you know, you you in a good position to win. Seven mm-hmm. years is a long time. And the head start that you got, man, you great, man. You can set yourself up. For success, man, don't, you know, the kids, let that be the motivation to push you harder. Why you got the youth? Because guess what? It's people that is trying to get into this space that's 20, 30 years older than you, 10, 15 years older than you, they got more kids, right? Mm-hmm. And so they got more things and, you know, they probably have uh, 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 properties and just other, you know, costs, which... It's limiting them to really fully invest into getting into space. So, man, I think you're in a great position, bro. I'm yeah, I, yeah, I just try not to trust trust myself out about it because, like, from like me, I'm a visionary in my head. Everything, I, even from high school, what I didn't even know about trucking or whatnot, I knew I was gonna have a purpose or something. I always thought about it on my head. So, I'm very, I'm very, just always thinking. I always try to put myself in a position to win but and if i'm not like if, if i feel like i'm not near my goal like it's like like it's it gets stuck on my head and it stresses me out but like i'm learning now like you know there's other people around my age that's probably looking up to me or probably not in a position i want to you know elevate and that's why i really started my channel for is for people around my age who want to yeah. do something i'm doing just to motivate them but now i'm learning like i'm moving people way older than me too so i was gonna say that earlier i you know in this space i look at my analytics you know what i'm saying in this space the demographic is older mm-hmm. you see what i'm saying so that's another thing where i was kind of telling you about the clickbait but i didn't want to like 
you know what I'm saying? We just, you know, talking for the first time. So I was trying to give you a little advice without really digging in no, deep. I, I'm taking 100%. That's why I need people around me to tell me, like, like yo, don't do this, do that. Don't just tell me what I want to hear. Like, tell me, like, let me know. <laughs> so the demographic in this space, you know, this is a small, tight knit community. A lot of the people that watch you, watch me, watch Kurt, watch Big Vic, watch the box truck couple, watch. You know, the, the, we're not talking about Lamborghinis, all mm -hmm. right? So ain't none of us going to never get a million subscribers. You know what I'm saying? We're not riding around Lamborghinis. We're not doing, we're not Mr. Beast. You know what I'm saying? We ain't curing the blind. So ain't none of us going to never get a million followers, right? So the the, the the space that we're in, is, it's a small community, it's tight-knit. People pull value from different people. Now, I look at the analytics. The analytics are from an older demographic. So with like what I was saying with the clickbait and things like that, the people that watch us are older. They don't really have time for game. They're a more mature audience. Mm -hmm. So you really got to get in, get the value out and mm -hmm. get going. They're really here for value. They're not really here for entertainment. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be um, truthful, right? And get straight to the point. And that's what I'm saying. You really don't need it like you're young but your core audience is going to be a lot older than you not a lot of people in this space are young yeah that's because that not. come from you know young people don't really have the capital to really go out there and do this business that costs a lot to start so mm -hmm. it's going i feel like it's going to be older people regardless it's going to be older people but you gotta you gotta know you gotta cater you gotta cater to everyone to, to those people you gotta keep that in mind the demographic that you're catering to uh and when you present you know your content and how you pre pre present it they ain't really don't with the antics you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying they ain't with the antics um they're not with you know they want just get straight to it you know the the average the average um view duration so it's like Right now, I've been doing good um, recently with view duration, but it's normally like four minutes or probably less. So, you just, well, like you said, well, to the point. Well, that's 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 normal. You know, the average person's attention span is short. So, if you you mm -hmm. get right in, once they pull whatever it is out, then yeah, yeah, yeah. they they gonna you know. So, your view duration, if you can get it to 50, 60 percent, that's good. Mm -hmm. But that's not really you know likely. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going to have people that are going to watch the video all the way through, but most people yeah. are just going to click, click, get the value out of it, especially if you present that at the beginning. And then after they get that, then they, they're going to click off. A lot of people don't are not going to invest the time in entertainment uh, video like they would watching, you know, Mr. Beast. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Definitely. But, you know, it is what it is. So that's why in this industry, you got to present that value. You got to kind of get in there and get out straight to the point. And, um, and just know that the demographic is of a more mature audience. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll be fine. I think that's where a lot of people lack, you know? So in my videos, I try not, well, I don't curse in my videos. I may yeah, slip I up in, in my live streams here and there for fun because we do, you know, you know, it's a little bit more relaxed. Mm -hmm. Um, in the in the live streams but for the most part you know these people are here because they really want to learn they want to learn and they're older demographic and they're investing their money and um they really don't have time for games you know what i'm saying so yeah as long as you keep that in mind man you're gonna be fine yeah, we go, we go say you pull value from everybody too. yeah a lot. yeah definitely bro because that's what i'm learning so every time i every time i get a call they bring up you they bring up uh box a couple they bring up like so everybody told they just pull information from each person. So I'm like, mm. definitely, bro. Yeah, I think a lot of the key people now, you know, after the, the smoke is kind of cleared now, and, you know, there's a lot of new people coming into the space I see that are popping up in my recommended. But I now, you know, a lot of the people that were selling people fluff have exited. A lot of people that weren't selling people like, fluff have exited. From the people who were selling... Like, you know, what you said, fluff, they mm -hmm. still around, bro. They just don't post YouTube or don't be in the truck per se. Cause like, I feel like because they jumped out when, you know, the business was booming, 
they created mm-hmm. other avenues for success mm-hmm. from you know everybody um you know tuning in with them so they don't really necessarily have to be in truck no more or post box truck content right but but you're fully vested into the industry because you grew up in it. Your father was yeah, a trucker. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, like, me, I've been in it since 2010. So, you know, people that have been into it pre-pandemic, you know, that, you know, you were kind of brought up, raised in it. I've been doing it for mm-hmm. going on 14 years now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's a different it's a different ball game versus a person who jumped into it when everybody else that's trying to sell a person knowledge that jumped into it simultaneously as the audience that they're trying to sell information to. And it, it behooves me why people bought into it. Like these people showed their journey. They're telling you they just went out and got their box truck, but they're selling you a seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I'm not here to understand it, but man, that's on the people. I can't put yeah. that on the person, man. I I it's just maybe because uh I know Hustles ain't go. They gonna hustle. They ain't mm-hmm. going nowhere. Mm-hmm. I, I saw. I tell people all the time, like, how you buy a, a thousand dollar course or somebody who been in the business for two months? I don't make no sense. What are you really gonna learn? From, learn from that? It don't make no sense, bro. It is. But it hey, is. But money, you gonna spend your money? I just seeing it as like people just trying to get a handout and try to like expedite their process of starting a business. But I'm like, it's your money. Do what you want with it. Ain't no shortcut. Ain't no shortcut. And actually, right now, I think it's harder. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, you know, from what I see, just being knowledgeable, you know, it's harder to. You know, when you know when I knew it was real out here, from people really trying to get in. Mm-hmm. I was on the phone with somebody, and they told me their rental rate was like fourteen hundred a week. That ain't nothing. I had I somebody that was paying twenty five. I said, bro, I'm, I'm like, bro, what type of money are you making that? Because you got to be making double that, trip, way more than that to keep your rental, bro. I'm like, why would you put yourself in that position, bro? Like, you have no choice but to work every single day. Yeah. I'm like, me personally, that's why I tell people, just it ain't your, you want to do it, but right now it's, just, it's not your time. You could wait a little bit. Right now it's just not your time. Yeah. Like Rico said, if a fish bite, catch it. No disrespect. You got to be smart. You know what I'm saying? And I just know, you know, and I always say maybe it's because I grew up in a big city where, you know, I just, you know, just more keen to, you know, knowledgeable. I can kind of spot BS from my way. You got a lot of people, if a person selling somebody some uh, fluff, and you know they find that one person who grew up in middle America who just don't know anybody that think it's a person that's really out there for their best interest. That's all they need, especially if they selling a ten thousand dollar mentorship. Man, you get one person, you Bro. straight. One person yeah. for the month, you straight. One person for the month, you go, you you good. But I I guarantee during that time period, man, they was getting multiple people a week, multiple people a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, it is what it is. They ain't going nowhere. I can't really I knock the them. Money, bro, I knew the money was real. I don't bring up people. I just, you know, if, if I know who we talking about, then cool. But I literally, I was going to pick up, I was going to Amazon facility to pick up an Amazon um lower, bro. On the big board, the digital boards on the highway. Box truck shorty. Bro, million, a million dollars gross. So I'm like, I'm like, yo. Y'all, was box truck shorty? Money. Yes. I'm like, y'all giving him that type of money, bro? <laughs> yeah, oh that dude. Wow, hey man, he and checked man. the he checked the bag, dog. I I used to, you know, a lot of people complain about him, but at the end of the day, man, look, bro, <laughs> I don't know. And I, it came to the point where if people if people <laughs> buying into you, what you gonna do? Stop. Wait, so he put the billboard right by the Amazon domicile? No, it's, right. it's like I think two. It was two exits before it. But on your on your way to the domicile, right? Yeah, if is that by the know, airport? Yeah, if y'all know about ETL six, it was just right there, big. I'm like, I'm like, wow. You put the million dollars gross on it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, Dang wow. Man. And this was doing what? This was doing like peak season or something. Was, I heard that about that billboard. That's when I was just started, and that was like what? It was probably September or October. Oh wow. 
That's hell of a hell of a marketing. That's a that's a good marketing thing on the way to great Amazon. Marketing. It's great marketing. And see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you can't really knock that. You know, I know he gets a lot of I would flat. Nobody, if it's genuine, it's genuine. I would never knock nobody else. I'm like, like shoot. Like, but that's just this, this is the power of influence. I always tell people like, even even with videos and people who don't know like what's really going on, it's like you. There's two type of videos. There's oh, um, I only made a if your video a video says I only made a thousand dollars this week, and another video I I made five thousand dollars this week. Which one you gonna click on as a consumer? Right. Somebody I'm made five thousand. Right. Right. It is yeah. what it is. Bro. Yeah, I did a live about that million dollar illusion. You know, it, it takes a lot to gross a million dollars. And I think people don't understand that, you know, <clears throat> you know, making a million dollars in the box show industry takes a lot. That I know a lot of people uh wanna no, go. no, no, hold on. Not the box truck in not box truck on Amazon relay. To make a million in Amazon, I don't run Amazon, but just what I know about it, it it's going it, it's going to require a couple of truck a, 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 a nice little infrastructure, of trucks and and labor and 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 management to make that type of money rolling mm -hmm. consistently. But and, I think uh, I believe he like nah. I I seen I don't know if it was Photoshop or not, but I believe he honestly made. I believe if he had multiple trucks, I believe he honestly made that. But I believe that was during. The good times. Yeah, he probably made it. And so I, I, I I believe I, that I coupled with coupled with the money he's making off of uh the courses and the influence. Definitely. He probably well, made more money off off the uh off the mentorships and the courses than he probably did in the trucks, to be honest with you. And that's and honestly that that's how it literally works. If you have other streams of income, you could afford more not to really be in your truck as much. But if this is your bread and butter, take what you see with a grain of salt. Yeah, because he could automate. He could automate. You know, the courses and stuff is automated. You know, people yeah, buy that twenty four hours a day. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying it's actually smart. You know, mm -hmm. after you really think about it, and people complain because another thing in this this space, a lot of people gonna complain. Yeah. You know, run to everybody and complain about the other person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know. Um, as a business owner, you got to be responsible for for the decisions you make mm -hmm. in, in yeah. your business, and 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 that's it. You know what I'm saying? If you hire someone and you know they're really not a good fit, but you mm -hmm. want a, you need that truck to move because it's been sitting, and that person, God forbid, you put them behind the wheel, and you know they're not a good fit, but you thirsty to make that money because that truck been sitting. They go out there and do some goofball stuff that ultimately mm -hmm. affects your business. That's the decision you got to live with because you made that decision. That's a person don't do they due diligence, you know what I'm saying? When they're investing into someone, then that's on them. Definitely. I, I can't. I thought you know. I saw people that bro, even I had some girl, um, some girl did me saying, you know, uh, she bought um into somebody course, you know, they she read through it, she actually got into a rental or whatever, and basically uh -huh. her business tanked. And when it tanked, the person just stopped contacting her. Hmm. So, did she like, tell you who it was? Um, no, she didn't tell me. Uh -huh. um, yeah, you gonna get a lot of them. I ain't got a lot of them, but you know. But then again, I, I can't play. I can't blame whoever sold the course because at the end of the day, I tell people not everybody's gonna make it out alive. Yeah. yeah. Any any business you go into, not everybody. There's no hundred percent success rate at all. Right. No, it ain't, it ain't. You know what I'm saying? It's not. You know, people are gonna fail. The statistics are st statistics. Most people fail within the first year, so not everybody's gonna make it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and then this company I work with, um, dispatch and service, uh, they got an accountant, and they said um, the box truck people fold within um, the first two months. They I believe it. I believe it because they don't have enough money to float the business to get started, mm -hmm. you know, or they just have just enough to get in, but like I said, not enough to float it. So yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of people fold in the first two months, first month. You know, I had a guy that folded within the same month that Jeez. came on a live recently you know so ah you know I don't, I don't know you know when i first started this in this industry it wasn't popular like no one was interested into this industry back in 2010 when i got started now it's just so popular it's 
it's amazing, you know. It's just everybody wants to get into the space now. So mm-hmm. well, know, I feel yeah. like like even though this business costs a lot to start up, this is one of the like main business you could jump into and, and make some money off the bat off off the rip. If you know what so, you're doing. Yeah, if you know what you're doing, of course. And you're if just you not pulling you're anything you see because they say, you know, it's a thousand dollars, but it's two thousand miles, so that thousand dollars is gone before you know it. So you really gotta be smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't know their cost per mile. A lot of people don't know how to calculate then, those costs. What I've been seeing it recently is a lot of people saying they make five thousand dollars um or better in a couple of days. Then I, you know, I go look at the sheets, they running back and forth from California. I'm like, not me. I you know, I'm not doing that. Sorry. Five thousand dollars in a couple of days. Oh, yeah, like three, four days. But I'm like, bro, y'all running to California and back? I can't do that. Running to California back from where? From wherever they, they at. Depending on where they coming from, that might not be a couple of days. That might be a week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, Going that's to the the then I, then I must be getting clickbaited myself because they'd be like four days, five thousand dollars. So uh, Yeah, that, that depends on where they, they coming from. But if you get in this business and you could go OTR and you love going OTR, you'd be in a great position. You got a couple of people behind you that know what they're doing and you can find those and you're willing to go OTR, you'd be all right. A lot of people don't but want to go over the road, though. Definitely not. I'll say out of the 10 people I talk to, only one probably will go OTR. Hmm. And I feel it. Me personally, I just did it because I was trying to make ends meet in the beginning. So I had no choice but do it. Like I said, sacrificing. So I did it. Yeah. Yeah. If I, I would, if I was young and I didn't have no responsibilities, I probably would put that work in for like a year or two or three. You know, whatever I need to do to funnel that money over to other assets. I, I get it. Mm-hmm. I know what that's like. You know what I'm saying? Not from consistent o- OTR, but, you know, just sending trucks over the road for moving and things like that. So I, I get, you know, if if a person who would have to do that consistently, I understand that, you know, times have changed and new generations just not, you know, back in the day, the boomers, they didn't have no problem. And actually, back in the day, pr- uh, prior to uh, deregulation, all right, trucking was a... If you compare the, the the amount of what a trucker would make back prior to deregulation, right, mm-hmm. compared to now, truckers back then made more money than they make now because they were making a hundred thousand dollars then. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And back then, the cost of living was a lot cheaper. Mm-hmm. It was like the wild wild west. That's why I was saying early, like people that early adopted. So the trucking industry. It's changed, you know, once Jimmy Hoffa came up missing and then they, the government came in and, you know, went through that whole, you know, deregulation, all that stuff, you know, that industry changed uh, as well. But, you know, you know, you know, it is what it is, man. I appreciate you, man, coming on, man. And, um, man, always, you could always tap in, you know what I'm saying? Um I'm on live a couple nights a week, man, and uh, I think you bring good value. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you definitely know what you're talking. You grew up in the business because your father. So, you know, unlike a lot of other people that, even though you're young, unlike unlike a lot of other people that have got into the space, uh, you you do have a background because you grew up around it. You know, so mm-hmm. you you do uh, bring value. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, 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 to the space, and man, I just think you sh- just keep it up and uh, keep putting that content out, man. And uh, I think when you transition into semi trucks, mm-hmm. you're gonna leave the box truck content alone. You're gonna go into the semi truck, and then when you get over there, keep it yeah, a thousand like, with you. Bro, I ain't gonna lie, that's a whole different space over there. Well, I feel like it's ball, more. Man. If I think like if I think people talk a little crazy now, when I feel like when I get in over there, I feel like it's about to be insane. See, because now over there, you're going to deal with more racism. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you're going to deal with more racism because now you got all those country boys that have been running trucks for years. You're going to deal with that. And then, you know, those truckers that have been trucking for 30, 40 years, the information when you put out, you got to be 100. Like, I be watching, like, um, a lot of those trucking live streams. I watch the good old boy ones. I don't watch 
Bro, I watch the good old boys. You know what I'm saying? And just the way they be talking, you know, if, you know, they're, they're pulling with you. They'll try you. Because, see, they just sitting around. They just sitting around the truck stops and they ain't got nothing to do. So they be looking for, you know, people to just pick pick at and, and, and go watch their live stream, go watch their videos and dissect them and talk crazy you about make, it so you make you can't make no mistakes over there you can't make no mistakes them good old boys that get you mm -hmm. good old boys them boys out there trucking they trucking you know <laughs> they, they 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 ain't playing no games so yeah but that's a different space but that's gonna open you up to a, a wider it's gonna open you up to a wider audience so as long as you know you you know you you on point then you'll be straight you you got a way bigger audience over there than 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 in this space so yeah. you know i appreciate definitely. you coming on man definitely i appreciate you for you know inviting me in here just talk yeah. chop it up real quick yeah. go check his bro. channel out what is it qb just qb just by so qb on youtube and uh you know you guys good content box truck young brother coming up man go check his channel out subscribe uh uh you know he's one of the people that you know Keeps it keeps it truthful and uh go check his channel out, man. I appreciate you coming on, bro. Check Thank in you, with bro. me though. Check in with me from time to time. All right, have a blessed night, bro. You too, man. Be safe. Right. All right, y'all. So that was QB. It jumped in. I'm gonna answer a few more of these questions that I missed while we was chopping it up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get up out of here. I wish you y'all. No, I rode past a truck stop and I literally seen about a hundred semis lined up. Uh, let me go back up. I know some of these people probably ain't in here no more, but it is what it is. I'm gonna answer just in case they come back and watch the replay, and then I'm gonna get up out of here. Uh, how long should the owner up get? All right, this is where I left off at. Ramon Hugger, if you're still in here, when starting off, how long would you say the owner should drive to get capital before hiring drivers? Um, well, let's start off with uh, uh, the um, um, with the bank specifications for getting money. Banks aren't going to talk to you unless you've been in business at least two years. So if you're looking to get a bank loan, it's going to take two years before a bank will even sit down with you um, in regards to a loan or a business line of credit. Now you can get hard money lending or hard money loans after you've been in business for about six months to a year from companies like On Deck or Cabbage, things of that nature. And they'll give you either uh, a daily debit loan, all right? They may give you a monthly loan, but it's highly unlikely. You know, it depends on how strong the business are and it depends on what industry you're in. More likely they like to give you those daily debit loans or a business line of credit. And those are six months to a year being in business. Those are a higher interest loan because they are a higher risk loan because you've only been in business, excuse me, six months to a year. Uh, so that question is kind of difficult to answer. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was in a truck for the first three years. So I started off small and I grew to three trucks, right? And then once I got to the third truck, uh, like in 2012, was it 2012? Yeah, it was 2012, actually. So two years, I removed myself uh, from that third truck, put a driver in that truck, and then I focused on managing the business. Um, so I got to three trucks before I removed myself and then went through my takeoff phase uh, of, of adding more trucks uh, to my fleet. Now, the way I did it, it didn't require me to um, look for capital. Um, I utilized the money that was coming in and, I, you know, I grassrooted and bootstrapped the business slowly, you know, over a period of time. It wasn't a rush, you know, to get to an X amount of trucks or get to an X amount of money. And I think ultimately me doing it that way, you know, it 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 uh, it put me in a good position. I know they say you always use other people's monies, but. People get into trouble using other people's money, all right, because if you run into a situation where you have a business line of credit readily available to you, nine times out of 10, you're going to use it. And if the situation is something that you can just not get around, ultimately, you're going to succumb to that and then you, you still got to pay that money back. Uh, but if you are in a situation early on where you don't have access to capital, 
you're going to work hard to figure a way out of that situation. And it was a lot of situations that I were was in early on. Um, let me not say a lot. There were some situations I was in because I actually started off really, really good and, 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 and grew exponentially. Um, but I, I figured ways out of those small situations that I got into. Um, I think if, 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 if the business is earning enough, first, let me say you, you'll know when it's time for you to remove yourself. If the business is making enough money and you're able to add on multiple, uh, uh trucks, you'll know when the business is making enough money to fund the next truck. And then that truck funds the next truck that you can remove yourself from, uh, the business. If you get up to let's say three trucks, the way I got up to three trucks, one truck covered the cost, one truck uh went to cash flow, and then one truck I was able to pay myself handsomely from. So I think if 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 you really, really work this the 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 business really, really well, um I I don't think you'll need a loan. I think the business will be able to fund your growth. Um and then when you get to a certain level of growth uh, if, if you want to get a business line of credit to start off with something that is just there when you need it. Uh, but if you don't need it, it just sits there like a recurring business line of credit. Then I think maybe start with a business line of credit is good, but you're not going to be able to sit down with a bank unless you've been in business 10 years. Anything prior to that is going to be hard money and you kind of want to stay away from that. All right. So hopefully that wasn't a long drawn out answer. I hope it was detailed enough. If you're still here, uh, you know, Uh, Axel say he was coming. I don't think Axel is in here anymore. Paying myself, I mean, let me see. Would you, would paying self by the same with cargo van 1500 a week to say a number? Miguel, if you're still in here, you could use that example that I put up in the, um, in the live stream earlier, $1,500. Only thing you got to do is take that formula out and input your own numbers. But yeah, you can use the example. There's van accounts that make about fifteen hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? Actually, if you're running like let's say Office Depot or Staples, you can average about three hundred dollars a day on a five day a week contract. Fifteen hundred. Now your variable costs and your fixed costs are going to be less than a twenty six foot box truck because your operating expenses are, are are a lot less because you're operating a van versus a uh, uh, a twenty six foot box truck. But then that should open you up to more profit. All right, but you can utilize that formula and just plug in your own numbers. Uh, shout out to QB. Yeah, shout out to QB for coming on the chat on the live stream. I, I, I mean, Ibrahim Berry, who, who box truck to buy? I'm looking right now. What do you suggest and what's the best price? Me personally, I say Freightliner or Hino. Hino, if you don't have, I would check if you're going to buy Hino in your area to see if there's a Hino service center somewhere in your area where you can service that truck because a lot of diesel mechanic truck stops don't service Hino because they don't have the software to diagnose it, all right? And that's an issue that a lot of people that went out and bought Hinos that stay and live in small markets, they don't, you know, they can't find anyone to service that truck and there's no Hinos in that market. So first, see if there's a Hino in that market if you're looking to buy a Hino service. And if not, then you probably want to go with the Freightliner uh, you're going to go with the uh, freight line with the Cummins and the Allison uh, uh, Trans. All right. Uh, as far as cost, me personally, if I were to enter into the space now, I wouldn't spend more than 40 grand on a truck. You know, I know trucks are going for 50, 60, 70. In some places, I wouldn't spend more than 40. Um, actually, I would be aggressively looking for a truck in the 20s. Um, and that's just me, you know. I got almost 30 apps on my phone. I'm about to put my trucks to work. No MC or DOT. Do your thing, big dog. Do your thing. Uh, thanks, Mark. Keep it up. You know your shit. Uh, MC, appreciate you for checking in. Urban and Bold in the building. Uh, what I need before I buy my box truck. I'm buying a 16 foot next week. What do you need? What I need before you buy a box truck. You need, to, you need the, the money to buy it. Um, I don't know what you plan on doing. So you got to let me know if you're still in here, Jacob, what you plan on doing. And then I, I'll tell you uh, the prerequisites you need 
prior to getting that truck so once you get it you'll be up and ready to go so let me know what you plan on doing if you're still in here and i'll let you know the prerequisites other than that based off the question that you've answered the only thing i could tell you with the information that you're giving me is you just gonna need the money to buy the truck uh what do you guys use to pay for fuel credit card fuel card or just separate checking account to manage all the fuel transaction thanks for the help fuel cards um if you're running just you and your own truck then you don't necessarily need a fuel card you can get a good business credit card to uh uh fund your fueling uh for your business um actually i would recommend you get a credit card if it's just you or your truck just get a good business credit card something that you're going to be able to get points for uh, when you if you when you or if you plan on scaling and you're running a small fleet and you keep scaling in ultimately you're going to want to get fuel cards uh because you're going to need cards for each individual truck and then you'll be able to set limitations and spending limits and things like that on those cards so people don't misuse those cards uh a lot of good info in this live mj Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. At Martha Mentor, salute. Michael Ball, appreciate you for checking it out. Hit that like button, guys. Those are still in here. I'm just going through these questions. Uh, Rico, I pull value from all y'all on YouTube. Salute to Rico East for checking out the live. Christopher Zambrano, what's up, Barkeep? Of the good content, brother. Christopher Zambrano, thank you for checking out the live. Appreciate you as always. Ibrahim Berry. Hi, can you help me to decide which truck to buy? Um, like I said a minute ago, uh, Freightliner or Hino. Uh, do your due diligence in your market. If you decide to buy Hino, make sure there's a Hino service center. A lot of uh, diesel mechanic shops won't work on a Hino because they don't have the software to diagnose those trucks. So Ford, all right, Toyota makes it. All right, so make sure you're in a market that has a Hino service center. If you if you, there's no Hino service center in your market, then I would suggest you get a Freightliner. Um, so that's what I would suggest. Uh, let's see. Uh, Upstart is a decent one too. Uh, how much would you spend for a used cargo van? Um, probably like somewhere between 20 and 30, 20 and 30. Yeah, I wouldn't spend no more than that. I really only want to spend 30. Uh, I would try to find like a 250 extended length, long, long wheelbase, high roof for somewhere between 20 and 30, 250. So T250 for the transit, 2,500 for the sprinter. Um, somewhere between 20 and 30. Uh, anything higher than that, then you're getting into inflated use rates because that's what the van essentially costs new. And um, I'm just not willing to pay uh, inflated rates for a used van. And I know that's what they cost new. I understand that like vans, like in pickup trucks, they really hold their value really, really well. And they've always held their value really, really well. Like I've said it before. When I uh, purchased a van, I purchased a new one because I was shopping for a used van and these vans were four or five years old with 170, 100, 890,000 miles and they still want 22, 23,000 for them. But a brand new van, 2,500 was 28. So I'm going to just spend the extra 6,000, let the rebates eat that up, right? And get the new van for 28 cargo vans pickup trucks they hold their value really really well and they've always held their value really really well so i understand that buying a used cargo van a, a 250 2500 between that 20 and 30 mark is what the average going rate is but once you go over that for though that particular spec of van you're getting into inflated used rate prices because technically those are what the van costs new so that's where I, I, I would be. Uh, no problem. All right. So if it ain't no more questions, I'm going to get out of here. It was a very good live. I'm sorry that it started out a little choppy at the beginning. But, you know, I'm sick. And I made a mistake. Hit the wrong button. 
didn't hit the right button, didn't realize it was muted, should have just hit the mute button. Then I start the whole live over. But it is what it is. Uh, shout out to QB for coming in. Glad I finally got a chance to talk to that young brother who also makes content in this space. Um, so shout out to him. Shout out to everybody else who makes content in the space. Shout out to all of you guys. And hopefully you guys gain some type of value from this. Learn how to pay yourself. Um, you know, I think it's very instrumental and very important that, you know, you know, owner operators know how to pay themselves. Um, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people fail. And you got to know your cost per mile. So before you know how to pay yourself, you got to know what it costs to operate. And you got to know that formula that I gave. If you came in late, you got to go back and watch the earlier part of the live stream for that formula on how to pay yourself and also make sure you pay your taxes too. All right. So if there's no more questions, I'm going to get up out of here. I got a video coming out probably Saturday about taxes and uh, it is tax season. So, you know, pay your taxes. Uncle Sam want that bread. Um, a lot of people hit my DM. They ain't had that money for them taxes. You got to put that money to the side. I'm going to talk about that in a few days in a video. So if it ain't no more comments or no more questions, rather, I'm going to skedaddle. I'm going to skedaddle and I'm going to get up out of here and I'll be back Sunday. And and I'm not I'm gonna, I'm back to educating all my videos, all my live streams going to be lessons. Y'all don't like when I do little cool things talking about can you carry in your truck and relationship trucking and all that stuff. Y'all don't like that. So you're going to learn today and you learn something today and you're going to learn some Sunday and Saturday when I drop the video, you're going to learn something. You dig what I'm saying? So that's what we back on. Hopefully you guys got some value from this today. Shout out to Pippi, my my uh my uh my moderator who's here all the time handling business. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate you. Shout out to all of y'all for rocking with the boy. Uh we're coming up on a year. Man, I wanna do something for the year. I might do something cool when I hit my year. I was going to do something cool this month, but it ain't looking too good, man. I'm probably not going to do that. I think it's best that I, I probably stick around. I was going to do something cool. I might wait to April. I might wait to April. I'm going to do something cool. I'm going to do something really cool, man. But shout out to Is the Walk. Shout out to Pippi, Rico, Ibrahim. Thanks, Mark. Should I buy a new or old truck? I am looking at 2010 Freightliner. Me personally, I'm... I, if you're just starting as your first truck, I wouldn't buy nothing new because your note is going to be extremely high. Not, not only is your note going to be extremely high, your insurance is going to be extremely high. And you may not enter into the space knowledgeable enough to know how to make um, X amount of dollars to be able to uh, uh, cover that that high cost. Um so what I would do if I were entering a space, and this is just my advice, the 2010 truck, as long as you take it, a mechanic with you that knows what to look for to diagnose that truck, that may be, be the better option as far as expenses, as far as your operating costs, because if you're not buying it cash, your finance rate is going to be a lot lower than buying a brand new truck and your insurance is going to be lower as well. And as you go through the learning curve, and you make those mistakes, you're not making those mistakes at a higher cost. You're making them at a lower cost. And ultimately, you know, um, rates are down. So you want your operating expenses to be as minimal as possible coming in. Um, so me personally, I would go with the older truck. All right, you're buying cash, then you definitely want to, I mean, unless you, you know, got a hundred grand to buy a brand new truck. Then yeah, the 2010. You got a hundred thousand to buy the brand new truck cash. Then yeah, the 2010 Freightliner. I would go with that and I work that thing. I make that truck work for me. Make the truck work for you. And I get everything out of that truck I can. You know, so take a take a mechanic with you and and make sure if you got to pay a diesel mechanic to go with you. Do that. Now, if you want to buy a new truck, you're looking at about a hundred thousand. 
once you finish financing, you look about 100, depending on your credit, 115, maybe 120, depending on your credit. You know what I'm saying? And you look at a $3,000, $4,000 a month note, 2500 $3,000 a month insurance. So now you're looking at about, let's say, six to $7,000 a month in fixed costs right there, just between the insurance and the truck. And I'm just, you know, I know that because I know what it costs to finance a $100,000 car. All right. On, you know, uh, on, a, on a loan. So financing a commercial loan on a $100,000 truck, you know what I'm saying? You're going to be spending about $3,000 a month. All right. You're going to be spending about another $2,500 to $3,000 on insurance. So, you know, so, you know, I would definitely get the used truck, bro. Me personally. Starting out. All right. I My, my first new truck I bought. Um, and I bought it, uh, for the sole purpose to do longer distance, um, final mile deliveries, uh, for select express because they guaranteed that I could do all the downstate stuff. So the only reason I bought a new truck is because it served a direct purpose. Other than that, then, you know, all my trucks you know, were used, you know, I didn't see a reason to invest in a brand new truck. Um, so all right. So if there's not any more questions, I'm going to get out of here and then I'll be back Sunday. Got a video coming out Saturday, which is kind of a continuation of this. Um, just actually pulling out a segment of the of the the example from earlier for, for taxes is taxes. Make sure you guys pay your taxes and set that money aside quarterly for your taxes. If there's nothing else, I'm going to get up out of here. Shout out to everybody that came in. I apologize for the. Um, the hiccups earlier. I'll see y'all Sunday. I'm out. Oh.